very good morning to you. I hear the sun's actually going to shine today. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? But of course, it's always sunny in our studios here at Sewing Quarter. Shall we take a look at what we've got coming up for you today? Yes. Yeah. So our first hour, tools, templates and pre-cuts and a lovely book which is steeped in history coming up at eight o'clock. Then nine o'clock, we've got Joe Carter's Lion. Oh yes, he is just a whim away. Ah oh dear, you've got to get that out there. Uh, 10 a.m., we love Tilda. Yes, we do. We absolutely love Tilda. And we've got a lot of it on at 10 a.m. Um, we'll see. We'll see that in just one moment. And then at 11 a.m., we've got a hexagon quilt. You're going to see that behind us all morning. It's very beautiful. Joe Carter's here to show us how to do that. And that is designed by Pam and Nikki Lintot. So a beautiful beginner's quilt, would you believe? It doesn't look like it at all. Um, now, items that we've got coming up in the Tilda Hour. Here's just a few of the makes out of one of the books. We've got a lot of books as well. And our Rosnerberg is back. Yes, we sold out last time. But here it is. And we've got all of these fabrics are looking gorgeous. Oh yes, look at that. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. There. And then we've also got this little chap. Whoop. Uh oh, I'm not lying. Here he is. We've got him and his friends. Each kit makes two of the lion. He's very happy. He is very happy. He's a friendly lion. And he's coming up with Joe Carter next hour. There you go. Now, we love to hear from you. We love to uh, see you makes, what you've been up to. So if you would like to message the studio, then here's how you do so. You head to the website, which is serenquarter.com. Click on watch, that's the important bit. Click on watch, because that's where everything's happening. This Oh yeah, it will happen. There we go, that's where it's all happening this morning. Um, and you can view in HD actually on the website. And then you can message the studio there. That comes straight through to us here. From messaging there to here, here to there. And then underneath, will be all of the products from today's show. All of those from yesterday, whoosh, they're about to go. A big well done yesterday to everyone who managed eight hours, well done. Did anybody get anything done at home or were you just glued to the TV? And if you would like to get in touch and send us any of your makes, if you're sending in pictures, then they do need to be emailed and that's studio at sewingquarter.com. So studio at sewingquarter.com. And we would love to hear from you. Okay, now, um, I promised you a book steeped in history this morning. This is a beautiful book. And it's called Dear Jane. Now, this is um, by a, a lady called Brenda, whose surname I can't really pronounce. I'm not going to try. And, um, and the Dear Jane book is based around uh, Barbara's fascination with this quilt made by a lady called Jane Stickle in the 1800s in America. Now, here, here it is, down here. And there are 225 different patterns for blocks in this quilt. And what happened was, while Jane's menfolk went off to war, she stayed home and she did the most intricate blocks that she could. Some are appliqued, some are pieced, but they're absolutely beautiful um, out of old shirts and this and that. Here we go. And the reason we know so much about it, because she's written in wartime, 1868 pieces. Look how many pieces. 5,602. So she did that just to keep herself busy whilst the men were off at war and she didn't have to think about it too much to take her mind off. Now, the way, there it is, there it is. So this lady, Barbara, who's written the book, she was actually a maths teacher and she was really, and, and a quilter, and she was really, really taken by all of the designs on here. And this has led her to create um, what they call baby Janes. And so she's got all of the patterns in this book for all of the different blocks and then different people, and this has been, become a, like a worldwide thing. Different people have created, you know, quilts out of all of these different blocks, and they're called Mini Janes, Baby Janes. So in here you get the patterns for all of these blocks. This is not a beginner book, okay? This is not, this is going to give you the templates, but it does assume some quilting knowledge, okay? But throughout here, so you'll see this is a great, a great example. She's written, as she's gone along, it's like a diary of her letters to the maker of the quilt, Jane. And it, it's just fascinating. So it's a walk through history. 
whilst you're getting all of these beautiful different designs to try, each block finishes at four and a half inches. And I've got some rulers to help you with this. And there are lots of people, there are lots of quilters groups around the world that are creating Dear Jane quilts. It's really lovely. So you get all the templates, all the different ideas, whether it's piece, she says to use freezer paper, so I've got that for you as well coming up. So freezer paper as well, so that you can do your applique pieces. There's a lot in here, absolutely steeped in history. It's really in depth, 200 and, what did I say, 50, uh, 25, 225 different patterns in here. It's an awful lot of patterns. And throughout, you get these inspirations. So you get, not only do you get to look at the, the, the quilt that set off all of these, but these are all your baby Janes. And it tells you who's made them around the world. And it's just created this beautiful quilting community. And it's, it set the author off on a, on a complete mission to find out as much as she can. So she went from mathematician to sort of historian and quilter. It's really gorgeous and just such a lovely, lovely book. And then you get more, more little stories. Just, you know, things like there were 250,000 quilts sent off to the menfolk during the war. Oh, look at that one. That's lovely. So if you love your quilting, you love your history, or you just fancy having a go at some of these, why not? So I love it because you get the actual piece the reference as to where it is in the quilt and you get that piecing for each of the one. It's just, it's just a beautiful thing, a really beautiful thing. And of course, you know, this is what I love about quilting is the history. They've got a bit about the author there. And then here, not many quilts were actually signed, but she has, she has actually popped all of her details on there. So you can see that within the quilt. Actually, this looks very Devon County, doesn't it? There we go. Now, Eileen says, good morning from a sunny but frosty Northern Ireland. Well, it was three degrees today. We didn't quite make a frost. Hey, now, talking of frosty, what about freezer paper? It's a tenuous link, but we're going with it. Um, now, Barbara in the book does say that if you're, going to, if you're going to do your piecing in there and your applique, use your freezer paper. This one's seen better days, hasn't it? We've obviously loved this one. So this is, we did, Lucy did a, a whole show on how to use freezer paper for your, for your applique. It's great because if I take out a little bit here, you get loads of it for a start. But that, that shiny side, that's normally what you'd put your sandwiches on or your meat or whatever it was that you'd wrap it up to put in the freezer or take to school or your lunchbox or whatever. Um, that bit actually has a slight stickiness. Not, well, it's only sticky when you apply heat to it. So you can use it for your applique, for your patterns. You can use it as a kind of a tracing paper. You can trace your patterns onto that side, cut it out, and then you can use it as a temporary bond using your iron onto your fabric and use it for your, for your pattern pieces. So it gives a very light bond, and that's for 4 99 But it's not, it's not a permanent bond. It's just so that you can get your patterns and your applique sorted. And that's 4 99 for... Have you not seen this in ages? Oh, Lucy did a fabulous show not so long ago uh, using it, showing us all the different ways to use with your applique. And you get something like 50 square feet of it. So it's a really effective, affordable way. Hang on, let me find it. So right at the, at the start of the book, Barbara tells you the different things that she's used. And she's, you know, she's, she's a maths teacher, so she's, she's quite... Um, She's quite, uh, she's quite, um, here we go. So templates, she uses Reynolds freezer paper, which is exactly what we've got. It says, I use Reynolds freezer paper. It's even the same brand. It's the actual freezer paper. It's like we planned the show. So she uses that. So that's, that's what she actually uses. And then, the other thing that she's done, because so many people were, were making these quilts, is um, Barbara has now created, I'm going to have to have a, she's got sort of a Greek sounding surname, Papadakis, something like that. Uh, she's also got, these are two of the most useful rulers that she uses 
within the book. So the two go beautifully hand in hand. So if you're getting the book, these are the rulers that she uses most to make all of those blocks, all 225 of them. And that's $21.99. It's designed by the author, and it makes a great accompaniment to the book. P-O-Z-G-14. There you go. So if you want to make the baby, maybe you want to do your own version of a baby Jane quilt, maybe you want to make the dear Jane quilt. I mean, the dear Jane quilt is an absolute labor of love, but absolutely stunning. Uh, and then this, oh yeah, you've got, you've got a few little details on there. Like I say, the, uh, the book does assume some quilting knowledge, but you can also look things up. And that just shows you how to, your basics on how to use the rulers. So it's one of those tools you'll use time and time again. Just a very handy template, your square and your triangle. When you're cutting your squares black, blah, blah, back, like I say, they're gonna end up being um, a finished, uh, well, you, you make them to five inches you, and then there will be a finished four and a half inch block. That's what she recommends in the book. Now, if you're a new buyer today, what, 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 what producer Paul? Oh, yeah, scissors. Yes, he's, he's saying, guess what? I was like, what, what? Something, something that I didn't, didn't know. Oh, no, I know. We've changed, we've changed the new buyer's gift to a pair of scissors, which is fabulous. So if you're spending over £10 today and you are a new viewer, good morning, and it's your first time spending with us, then you will get some lovely scissors for free. You don't have to put in any code or anything like that. It's all just going to happen beautifully. Beautifully. Now, talking about making templates and things like that. Actually, before I go on to this one, producer Paul, you know what's back in stock that I haven't mentioned yet? Because the other thing she says to do, uh, Barbara says in that book, is to use template plastic. And I've got two lots of template plastic. Should I go with the clear template plastic? So this generally sells out. Now, you can use this um, for all sorts of different things. It's £2.50, so if you're doing your templates of any shape, size, or description, or maybe you just want to, maybe you're making Joe Carter toys and, and you want to have, um, you know, templates that are more durable than just paper ones, and you can always transfer them onto plastic, and this is £2.50. Just £2.50, GXZG76. Now, these always sell out, so if you want them, do please be quick on these. And then we've also got the gridded one. This is really handy. Do they call it griddled? Gridded. No, it's gridded. Gridded template plastic. Great for designing reusable template shapes. And easy, because you can uh, trace onto it. Oh, there you go. You can see it through the white stripe on the top. Two ninety nine. dollars for your gridded plastic template. So yeah, and also if you want to, yeah, Producer Paul says if you're fussy cutting, because you you'd be able to see through enough to check that you'd got the bit that you wanted. So great, these are just so useful for making your templates and making durable templates. So if you're gonna be making multiples of things, it's often worth the just popping it onto template plastic. And we don't, well, because it's one of those things we struggle to keep it in stock. Cuts easily with scissors, craft knife, or a rotary cutter. There you go. And once you've got it, it's there, isn't it? It's done. Now, other useful tools. Um, you can do, in the Dear Jane book, there are going to be lots of strips. Generally, I think, if you're a quilter, you are someone that is likely to cut lots of strips. And um, this is the shape cut that we have here. Now, this is by the woman who brings us uh, your quilts as you go. So this is the June Taylor shape cut. And it allows you to cut in um, half inch increments. You can cut squares, you can cut triangles. So if I just show you on the back here, you've got full instructions as to how to use it. So you can just cut your normal strips, then you can turn it and then you can cut it into squares and then you can turn it and cut it into triangles. So very, very easy to do. And then look there, she's even managed to cut it in Texas. So very, very handy, very useful, um, and very easy to follow as well. Really nice instructions. So don't throw that away. She's also got some little YouTube clips as well that you can go and watch and find out how to use that. So we've got that. Um, so when you get it home, if you're in any doubt, go and have a little look like that. But let me just show you the basis of this. So you'd fold your fabric. You can see here I've got selvage 
And so, in fact, I've got two. I've got two lots. I've got two lots of fabric there. I thought that was quite a lot that I was cutting through. Well, let's just have a go then, shall we? Line it up with your zero. So this is just a normal 45 mil rotary cutter. I've lined it up on my zero. I did trim back earlier, but I used a different rotary cutter. So I'm hoping that this one is going to be uh, nice and sharp. Now I've realized how much I'm cutting through. And you just pop your rotary cutter into the slots, into the grooves, and you cut through. Now that has given me a two and a half inch, because that's what I decided to go for, strip. And in fact, because my fabric was double folded, look, I've actually got two, two and a half inch strips perfectly cut. So if you, it's not bandages, but it's not bandages. But I'll show you just in one, just one minute, because I just need to cut myself a four and a half inch strip, not, not myself, I just need to cut a four and a half inch strip for later. So super easy to do. There we go. Uh, and I'll just cut another one. So I'm going to cut a five inch here. OK, and I'll get rid of that. We'll look at that later. That, that, that's just, yeah, just, just for me later. Now then, I'm going to now show. So this is a five inch strip. So again, if you're, uh, if you're cutting blocks, anything like that, I'm just going to cut my selvage off there, line the bottom of my fabric up along there, and then I hope that cuts off all my selvage. And I did five inches, didn't I? So I'd go then to my next, to my five inch, cut there, 10 inches, cut there. And you can just work your way along. And there I have perfect five inch squares cut to perfection, done. Now, if I want, and we've got, yeah, I've got lots there. One, two, three, four, five. I've got about eight there. So super, super, super quick. And that's the, that's the beauty of this. Now, what if I want to do my triangles? I know, controversial, but I'm going in for it. Da, 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 da. Half square triangles there. Uh, now, the other thing is, if I want to, if I'd wanted to do one with us and leave a seam allowance or anything like that, you can see on here, this line here gives me a quarter of an inch. So if I didn't want to line that up, if I wanted to leave myself a quarter of an inch so that I can sew that way, then I can just realign it. Uh, it would be this way, wouldn't it? I'd line that up that way and then that would give that there. Um, morning, Ali. She says, good morning, Natasha. Lovely sunny day here in Elite. Bit of a frost this morning, though, love, Ali. It, do you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't frosty this morning. You lot have all had frost, no. So you see there, and then you've, you've got your seam allowance if you want. So super quick, super easy. We've got emails as well. Well, good morning. You're all up bright and early this morning, aren't we? Oh, Emily. Now, Emily says, uh, here is my dear Jane quilt in use. Oh, yes, the book and the add a quarter inch ruler makes this quilt so able. Uh, it's one block at a time, love the shows. Uh, Emily, I think you are so right. Actually, I didn't think to add a quarter inch ruler on, so that, thank you for, for spotting that as well. So this is the book. This is the Dear Jane book. Emily, how long did that take you? Because that is just stunning. And you're creating heirlooms. That's the beauty of it, is that you're creating heirlooms. And I just think that's beautiful. And uh, now, what the author does say, Barbara, she says, make sure you use cotton. She says, she says, she doesn't mind what fabric, buy the best that you can. She said, but actually, you know, these were made out of old shirts and things like that. But look at that. Just buy, you know, use the best fabrics that you can. What would you make it out of, Produce Paul? You'd make it out of Tim Holtz. I've, I've got some, what? I know we've got some Tim Holtz. The Tim Holtz would be, oh, you see, look at that, but all the different colorways. So what I love about this book is that you do get an idea of all the different colorways that people have used to really make it stunning. And I, it's 225 templates in here. So if you've got your template plastic, you've got your freezer paper, yeah, 13 peer template, yeah. It's all right, isn't it? 
And this is a book that you can just delve into out of. But yeah, no, Emily, I'd love to know. I mean, look at that. They all look so different. I'd love to know how long your Dear Jane quilt took. And what a beautiful, beautiful heirloom piece. And I love that you get the picture of what it looks like in the quilt there with it. It's just, it's beautifully thought out, beautifully put together. Um, and then, of course, you've got the templates that the author made as well. Well, I don't think she actually made them herself. I don't think she trots down to the factory every day to make them. But these are her designs to go with the book. So $21.99. So lots of you buying the two together. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It kind of makes sense. Now, you know what I'm like for safety. You know what I'm like for safety. Um, oh, OK, I was just going to say if you get that, get this. But uh, just as I mentioned, safety producible, then we'll have a look at Tim Holtz. Um, these are your little adhesive grabbers. So these are your clear plastic grabbers. Normally, we have creative grids that have the inbuilt grip on the underside. If you are going for the easy range, they don't have that. So these are your best friends in terms of that. These are your clear fabric grabbers. And also, it means that if you have other, other templates, other rulers that, that slip around on your fabric, get yourself some of these. And look, here's an open pack. And, uh, and you can just peel them off and stick them on your rulers. And then it just means that they're going to they're gonna give you that support, give you that bit of grab. Everybody wants a bit of grab. And uh, safety, that's, that's the thing. When you've got what on cupboards at the bottom? Oh, the little plastic rubber thing, so it doesn't dent your carpet so much. Well, yeah, but this is just, this is for your safety. So just so you don't, it, but it's, yeah, it's all for your grip. And 3 99 pop it in your basket and you're done. Fabulous. Right, now, Tim Holtz. Let me show you. We do love Holtz. <laughs> they do look like bandages, don't they? Well, very handy if you're going off to war. Grab yourself some bandages, off you go. <laughs> That's the theme of the book, by the way, not, not just, you know. Uh, what, what, what? Oh, we've only got two left? What? This, and this is, um, I think, Producer Paul, you're quite right. This is your foundations from Tim Holtz. This is a 25-piece fat quarter pack, but I'm just going to peel some of these out because it is quite nostalgic. So if you're going for that nostalgic type look, then why not grab yourself a, a spot of Tim Holtz? Tim Holtz uh, started out paper crafting. I've got a lot of his distress inks and they're, they're just fab. And it means that you can really get that aged look. But what he's managed to do is not just get that aged look with his paper crafting, but also with his fabrics. And again, you're sewing in, you're almost kind of sewing in a bit of memorabilia, aren't you, as you go. I love the map one in this. Yeah, no, it's fab, isn't it? There you go. So you get... So you see, if you've got, if you've got any of your templates, then you can... Yep. Yeah. And if you're working with your template plastic, of course, then you can decide which bit you want to... Uh, but you can, really, you can see, it's enough that you can see through if you're working with template plastics. So that's why I've got all these different things on the show for you. 25 fat quarters. I love they just work so well together. And what I would do, if it were me and if I were you, then I would also be stocking up on some ivory or some cream to make it go even further. Because then, oh, it's just lovely. I really do love these. Now look, look, at, look at these, because hang on. There, oh, we've got the butterfly ones in here, Producer Paul. Look, look, look. Uh, right, uh, you've, you're already adding it to your basket, but you will have to check out on these because we've only got two of these, two left. Are we not getting this one back again? I know that's one of your favourite ones, isn't it? I want to show you the floral one because there is one florally one in here. Here it is, just down the bottom. I knew it was in there. You get so many, you're getting 25 of these. So this is, this is the one floral one that's in there. Isn't that gorgeous? And it just works with all the other ones. So beautiful. So you can, you can get that, that little hit of, oh, look. It's, it's that feeling of yesteryear, isn't it? You could imagine. I think this is a lovely addition to anyone's. 
I've got mine at home. I just haven't actually, you know, started making anything with it. I've got them all ironed. And I'm, I'm going to make one for my husband. Something for the hus husband, but uh, yeah, I don't know what yet. So they're sitting on the side. Uh, now this is under a four pound fat quarter, which for your designer fabrics, you know, it's very reasonable. Here they are. Uh, now, I cut earlier using my shape cutter. I cut some um, four and a half inch strips and I said, I'm going to save those for later. Um, producer Paul then, you know, took the mick out of me. Um, and, uh, you know, as is his wont. But I'll show you exactly why in just one minute because I've got um, a hexi cutter for you. So maybe you're going um, to cut yourself some hexagons. It's, you know, it's a great traditional quilting shape, isn't it? Let's face it for example. Um, although actually that's a different ruler on that one, but you know, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to that at 11 o'clock. Uh, but if you want to do your English paper piecing with your hexes or you just want to cut your hexes, I made a right old mess of that. Sorry, floor manager Wayne's money. Uh, right, let's have a little look at this. I'm going to have to open this up. Is that all right? Oh, it's one of those things. I don't know if it's going to be easy to open. Right, so this is again from... Easy, easy does it, and you get your instructions. There's no getting rid of those, is they're stuck on there. So your, instru your instructions do come with it, quite firmly with it, and even down to you've got some easy pictures. If you've got the words, then that's absolutely fine. But this is a multi-size one, and again, what I would say to you is. Flip it over. Sorry, I've got really dry hands. And I've got a whole load of hand cream on, and now I'm just getting sticky bits left on the, uh, on this way. Get yourself your little grabbers. And put yourself a little grabber in each corner. Oh, well, yeah, $6.99 for your hexi template. But then also make sure that you do get your little grabbers so that you're safe when you're using it. I might even put another one in each corner. Just there, so I'm nice and even as well. So now I've got those in place, I'm safe to use it. So these were the strips that I cut. Let me just check that was a four and a half inch strip. And I didn't keep the five one out. Oh, that is the five inch one. No, where's my four and a half inch one? I was being all organized. Is that my four and a half inch one? Ah, here we go. Um, here we go. So, and again, you can do this in multiples if you wish. So you can line those up. And then what you do, you see you've got four and a half inches. Can you see it's all shown there? I'll move that across. I've got some salvages there. If you've got your rotating cutting mat, crack that open now. And then you'd cut along there. And then just along there. Get rid of your scraps or save them, do whatever you want to do with them. Flip it around and then reline it up the other way. So I know that I've got here my four and a half inch cut. So I'm going to line that up there, top and bottom there. And then again, I'm going to cut. Now this could be your template. Oh, for your English paper piece, I just caught that there. There we go. And there you've got, and look, lots of layers there as well. Really easy, E-Z. So multiple layers, cut, done, perfect. Dink, dink, dink. There you go. And so you've also got, so you've got um, a two inch, two and a half inch, three inch, three and a half inch, four inch, four and a half inch, five inch, and five and a half inches on that ruler for 6 99 Very, very useful. I know a lot of you will be popping that in your baskets with good reason. It's great. Um, and of course, they're all in one, all in one piece. So you know, it's not, it's not like having all these things that, if you're like me, you can lose. You know, that happens. Not going to lie. Now, other useful things that we have on the show. I'm going to swap to a smaller rotary cutter now. This isn't open, by the way, for support. Did it need to be? Are we going to, are we going to have a go? Yeah, why not? Uh, circles. You know that I love a circle. And. Who doesn't, quite frankly? But <laughs> they are tricky old things to cut. So with this one, this gives you your template 
to cut. Now, the first thing to tell you, oh, hello. The first thing to tell you about this is that you will need a smaller sized rotary cutter. Okay, just so that you know that. Um, these, hang on, let me find this bit here. Because these sizes down here, they are smaller. Okay, now this gives you 10 inch, 9 inch, all the way down to 2 inch. You put your fabric fold line along there. If you want to do a half inch, uh, a half circle, then you add your seam allowance in there. So just where you want to do it, that will mark off the center of your fabric. Again, what I would recommend is putting your poppers on the corner, your grippers on the corner. Let's spin that over. Just because you know I'm fanatical about safety. I want everybody safe. I don't want anybody cutting themselves because this is, you know, this is what put me off in the first place. So let's make sure everybody's nice and safe. Good, that's not going to go anywhere. That's all nicely gripped. Now then, pop your rotary cutter in there and around you go. D to D to D. Round it goes. There you go. Oh, I've just got a little nick there. So just take that out. There we go. What I would say, the top tip that I would give for you when using this, when, when using this, because with the Fiskars, it's got the cutter that comes with it. But with this one, what I would say is choose an edge. Either go with the inside edge or go with the outside edge, which was what I didn't do, which is why I had that little sticky point there. So I would say go stick to the outside edge there. Let me show you that again. And cut, cut from there, and then you'll be absolutely fine. What's up, Juice Ball? He's saying so. He's coming up with an idea. So yeah, go, because you can see here, my blade will move across. So as I didn't do with that one, I'm gonna stick now to that outside edge. You see what I mean? Yeah? And then you just, you can, and then even if you have to take the blade off to readjust, you do just stick to that outside edge. And there, oh, look, you see, that's where I just, but it means you can just go in and, and readjust. There you go. And there it is. But it's 24.49. Make sure you've got yourself a small rotary cutter. If you've already got your small rotary cutter, then great. Uh, and off you go. Now then, fabrics, fabrics, fabrics. I've got all sorts of fabrics for you today. Let's move those out of the way. So this is about templates, fabrics. This is getting you all ready so that you can then do the projects that you want to do. Now, CAFE is always a great starting place, isn't it? Oh, which one? I've got lots. This one with the Delft pottery. Nice. Mm. Maybe you're feeling a little bit sunny now because the sunshine is going to come out today. Someone whispered something about heat wave, but I don't quite believe them. Here we go. Now, in here, you are getting some of the most gorgeous fabrics. Here we go, just to give you an idea. So you're gonna get, and then I'm just gonna give you more of a clue along there. So this is your Cave Facet Fall 2017 six piece of fat quarter pack. Now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six in there. So this is pack number four, but you're getting six fat quarters in there. So, you know, imagine, say you were using your hexi cutter, then how about you could decide to have that piece in the middle or maybe that piece in the middle. And so you can then, you can fussy cut when you're doing your hexes. So you've got all of that to play with. Uh, let me show you the size of your fat quarters that you're getting. I know you like that one, that's why I chose that, but I know that you also like the stripe. Uh, the regimental stripe, look at these, because there are so many different colours to work through. Well, of course there are so many different colours. It's K-Facet, isn't it? There you go. 
It looks beautiful together. It looks really beautiful together. And that's front and back of a cushion, says so produce pool. Yes, absolutely. There's always so many options. So many options. And then you've got, <laughs> this, is, this is the one that we always said uh, looked like producer Hannah's when she's got all of her hair out. She's got amazing hair as producer Hannah. Uh, 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 hang on, where are my other ones? I've hidden them down here. There we go. Look at these little beauties. This is his Delft china here, lovely blue and white. And then you've got your ziggity zigzags along there. So you can already see how these colours, oh, they just work, don't they? Yeah, that's a technical term. The colours, woohoo. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's $27.95. I know so many of you absolutely love a spot of cave. And why not look? Just. <clears throat> Gorgeous. So if you want a bit of colour, this is the way to do it. Because, yeah, the Easy Jane quilt, bringing it up to date and modern, could you imagine? And also, you know, it wouldn't have to be all cave. You could do just cave sections. Maybe you want to do all the borders or something. Oh, this one, I forgot this one. Oh, hang on. My cloud roses were hiding underneath. That's no good. Oh, has Emily emailed back about the quilt? Or oh, what did she say? Took her about a year, wow. But that's because it's not as hard as it looks. Just go one block at a time. It's the old thing, isn't it? How do you eat an elephant one mouthful at a time? Don't go eating elephants, it's not nice. But you know, that's what they say, isn't it? Look at that, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? I know that you've taken the, the graphics out, but I just love that one, so I just wanted to show everyone. Sorry. Right, next one, let's stick with Kay for a little while. Maybe you could, ooh, a year. That's beautiful. Actually, do you know what? A year for something as gorgeous as that. Yeah, this one. Let's have a look at some more cave. This is the lollipop one. Well, it's not actually a lollipop, so that's what you think, isn't it? Which is for you always see lollipops on there. It's a sweet lollipop sounds a bit. Well, I've got a four-year-old I'm used to lollipops. Here we go. Now, the Delft in green is one of those ones that I wasn't sure about. But then, when you start putting it with the other greens, you go, oh yeah, oh yeah, actually no, I really like that. And this is, this is the genius that is Kaif. Would I have ever put these patterns and color combinations together? No! But when you do, my word, it really works. It's just beautiful. So $27.95 for your six piece fat quarter pack. This is pack number two by K Facet. So if you want more sort of autumnal shades maybe, then maybe this is the one for you. But you do have a couple of beautiful florals in there along with your Delft, along with those big cloud roses. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Actually, can I show you? Because this is the one that you really like, isn't it, Producer Paul? It's almost, it's like nighttime. Nighttime in your garden. Gorgeous, isn't it? That, I mean, I could just have that as a cushion just in itself. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, but you see, Producer Paul, you said you don't have a garden, so you could bring it in. Producer Paul's got a bit of hay fever. So even when we had the flowers in for, uh, for Easter, it was causing a few sneezes. So uh, this, is, this is the safe way, Producer Paul, for you to get the garden in. Now, check out those baskets. Have we got many of these, or what are we, what are we looking at? This is the most limited out of the cave. So if you're after this one today, do make sure that you've got that. Um, more cave, I hear you say, why not? Why not? Here we go, this is the next, I, the next one. I just picked up the next one. Uh, it's, the one it's got that one in and look at these, look at the zigzags. This is the one with the pink cloud roses in. There we go. What, what's happened? Oh, you said the last one is the was the most limited, but actually what you meant is this one. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Six of these left. So $27.95, KHRW06. So if you are after this today, we've only got six of them. Look at this. Yeah. But check out as many times as you like. It's only one p, p Can I show you this one? We always like this one. Oh no, but this is, this is the one out of this lot that I would make just into a cushion by itself. It's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Producer Paul says he wants a pocket square. 
I've got, oh, I've got a bit of a thing about snails. I just say it's the Fibonacci sequence, isn't it? I love it. So, um, you know, this is, this is very satisfying for me. This is, this is absolutely lovely. Uh, and here we go. This is a Philip Jacobs design. The florals generally are. Uh, Philip Jacobs actually is a, is a beautiful botanical artist, but um, hates, hates having a look at different colours. So he works beautifully with Kaif because Kaif came along and went, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm great with colour actually. Why don't we, you know, work together? And, and that's, that's how that happened. So these collections are, um, Kaif does all the colourways and actually a lot of the designs are his as well. But he also works in conjunction with Philip Jacobs and Brandon Mabley. And he calls the three of them the three musketeers. There we go, that's that one. And my last Kaif for you this morning is here. I'm going to open this one straight up because look at this. There, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? But you see, to complement, I've got these. Have I just made that really difficult, putting those all the way around? There you go. So you can see the tones are just so well placed. And you've got these tones from the Delft are all in here. And then you've got these tones and it's all, it just all flows, doesn't it? I think it's one of those things, K Fassett, he was, he was a name that I knew and I, you know, I, and I knew that he was incredibly prolific and, and across all different sorts of crafts knitting and everything else. But I hadn't realized until you actually pick up K-Facet fabric and start to work with it and use it, that's when you really start to appreciate the genius. And I really do think I would put him up there as a colorful genius. Uh, we've got a birthday message. Happy birthday. It's from Rachel. Happy birthday, Rachel. Oh, it's her mum, Pam. Oh, hello. Happy birthday, Pam. I'm gonna say happy birthday. And that's, uh, you're down in Banbury. Happy birthday to you, Pam in Banbury. What are you doing? What are you doing to celebrate today? Apart from obviously watching us, but happy birthday, Pam. I hope you have a lovely day and get spoilt rotten. Well, you know, treat yourself to a spot of kaif. Hey, do you want to have a look at some more templates? I've got a three to have a look at. So let's start here. Um, and now, oh, this is the mini double wedding ring. Mini double. And it's, well, it is little, but... Again, nice and see-through so you can see exactly where you're, where you're placing it. You've also got all the seam allowances in. And then look at the back, because this is what I love with this. Really clear instructions as to how you're going to put everything together. Yeah, really clear, really easy instructions. So if, that's, if this has been something that has been bamboozling you, get yourself some clear instructions. And there they are, step by step. Easy peasy, colour coded, and off you go. And there are all your templates there, $27.99. So that is one of them that I've got for you. Uh, there are oh, the Drunkard's Path. The Drunkard's Path. Here we go. Now, yeah, it even looks a bit drunk in the package, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's because those circles don't lie properly in together because obviously seam allowances and things have been added together. So $13.99, a really affordable way to be getting yourself some clear acrylic tools. Like I say, do get those grabbers so that you get that grip as well. And then to give you some inspiration on the back, some beautiful, beautiful ideas. Actually, I really like those colorways as well. We've got some fabrics that look great in those colorways. So you're getting your acrylic, acrylic, acrylic rulers. And then can we have a look at these any closer? I just think they're really lovely. Just the fact you've got three or four quilts in one ready to go just by changing things up a little bit. I like the wiggly wiggly one down here. Eh, it's a good wiggly wiggly one, isn't it? A little bit 60s, yeah. Oh, you could team that with the twist and shout fabric, couldn't you? There you go, so that's your drunkard's path. Very clear, very easy to use. And off you go, $13.99, great price too. VPZG52. 
There we go. So the pattern, it's all included. And then if you want your wedding ring, look at this one. Just you wait till you see the instructions behind. So this is your double wedding ring. And again, all the pieces that you need. It is a big old template, isn't it? It's $21.99 for your double wedding ring. We've had the mini one. This is the big one. But look, look, look. Look at all of those step-by-step -step instructions. And again, they've done it really easily. So it's all color coded so you know exactly which bit went where. Which is a beautiful thing. I love that. It's so colorful, isn't it? I mean, obviously you can make it as colorful as you like, but, and you also get some tips as well. We all like that. Um, and of course, if you've gone for the shape cut as well, then it says line up on the edge of a 10 and a quarter inch square. Well, you can cut that with that. So you can have already cut your squares out with that. This bit down here is a seven and a quarter inch strip. So again, you can have cut a seven and a quarter inch strip using your shape cut. So you can do all of your prep to then make the actual cutting of these bits nice and easy and simple. It's getting the right tools for the job, isn't it? And you will build up a vast array, I'm sure, and then just make life really easy for yourself. So that's $21.99 for your easy double wedding ring. So that's the big one. And then we also had, of course, that double midi the mini wedding ring, which was the little idly biddly one. So it depends what size you want to go for. There we go. Now, before starting out on a brand new project, please change your rotary cutter blade. That's all I would say, £3.50 for your easy. Are these the right ones? Yep. That's £3.50 and you're getting your rotary cutter replacement blade in there. Very important. It just, it just, oh, just makes life so much easier. Um, so UHZG02 for your rotary cutter blade. We are limited, there we go, 45 mil. UHZG02. And it's also got, I mean, even if you're, this is what I, um, I've only just realized that these have got it in there, but they've got like little measurements all around there as well. So you can really get intricate with and know how far you've cut. She's very clever. There we go. Now, mode of fabric. <gasps> Not always easy to get hold of. Um, and sometimes if you ship it in from America, then, you know, if you ever had that thing where you thought it was a really good idea to get stuff in from America, and then it arrives with a, with a, with a big import charge. You don't have to worry about that because we've done all of that for you. Here it is. Looking gorgeous. Now, the beauty of this is of course you're getting kind of an ombre of color here, but this is the thing. For 39.99, you are getting 12. But you see, let me just take, for example, the top K facet off one of the tops there. And if I just lay that across the top, then you can see why it's so handy to have these rich colors, because look, I could use these to complement. Suddenly my cave is gonna go an awful lot further. If I move this down to there, then I could pick out the greens that I've got down there. So you've got all of the different colors. Gray goes with pretty much everything. It's what, sorry, produce ball? Yeah, no, 12 fat quarters in there, it's great, isn't it? You see, I moved that along there, so already, with, with one fat quarter, with one K facet fat quarter, I could use pretty much all those colors. It's gorgeous, really handy, isn't it? I really like that with that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. Let me put the cave back there. But it's just, it's just an example. I could pick up any of these colorways and you would find some fabrics in there. So again, it's beautiful quality Moda. Lots of people just, if they see Moda, they just buy it because they know the quality is going to be there. This is a really lovely, lovely quilting weight. It's a heavy quilting weight. It's lovely. It's a beautiful colorway, isn't it? It's almost coral, but not quite. $39.99. And again, this is just one of 12. It is summery. These have all been selected by Kate Spain. 
And so basically, Moda will get different designers to pick colorways that they find incredibly useful. And this is Kate Spain's selection. Oh, have I got a warning on this? Oh, we only started with 10. Three have already gone in the baskets. OK, this is not yours until you check out. And that's the only way. So if you're new to us, you might not know this. But um, when, you, um, when you check out your basket, that is when it's confirmed. All the time, it's just languishing in your basket. It's not yours. And it means, especially when we've got a limited amount of things, you might think, yeah, no, I'm safe. You know, I can go off, have a cup of tea or whatever. Come back. And then if it's been really popular and somebody else has wanted it, especially if they've rung up, it'll be taken out of your basket if someone's ready to just buy it there and then. So if you are, have got your heart set, and we've only got 10 of these, please check out your baskets. And then you know that you've got it. And that is very important because otherwise you know and if 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 you um if you're not someone that likes internets and things like that give us a call 0800 112 4433 it's free and in the uk as well and they're really helpful and sweet right what next produce paul more fat quarters oh we like this one now i've got judith yeah judith's fancy this is the one that you really like, isn't it, Producer Paul? With, it's got, he says it's the best one ever, that's right. Um, now, quite a folk art, you feel, with your Judith, Judith's fancy. This is designed by Jennifer Paganelli. I love it. It's got a real painterly feel to it. It's just, okay, this is, that's, that's your cushion cover, isn't it? And you could, you could just put some, um, you could put some wadding on there and you could just kind of like faux quilt around it. Look at this one down here. Woohoo! It reminds me of Carnival because also what you're getting in there, how about some pineapples just to set the whole feel off? I love this. It's bright, it's happy, it's going to take our mind off miserable weather. Well, no, it's a, it's a really beautiful collection. Producer Paul's saying, you know, we, we don't have many fabrics like this. No, we don't. And it's really stunning. So you've got your pineapples in a different colourway there. Yes. But then, you see, you get something a little bit more regal there, which is really rather lovely. And then you're also getting your florals in there. And then again, um, so this, this artist has a lot of her work up in, in a folk art museum. It's got that kind of feel to it. And I just think it's, look at that, you've got kind of like a gold colour coming through there. Yeah, then you've got it in a, in a, in a lighter colourway there. And then, look at this in that, whoa, nice. So a traditional quilt in non-traditional modern fabrics. Fab, I love that. And this is $49.95. Um, you are getting 11 pieces. I always like to double check when it's an odd number. Is that right? Have I got that right? Yeah, absolutely I have. Um, so actually, I might even get all organised and put those back sort of together. And uh, so just a beautiful collection, lots of fun. And again, if you've gone for something like um, the Moda Plains by Kate Spain, then a beautiful accompaniment because you're going to be able to pick out those colours straight away. For example, should I just change just very, very quickly? Look. So if instantly, if I just spread the motor out very quickly there, even just not, you know, not fully, but you can see already just how many of those colours you can pick out within there. So just, just an idea. I you know, I love it when you get really useful colours. It's fabulous. Now, the book that we showed you at the very start of the hour, very, very popular. I, I think it's lovely because you are getting that history. And, and this is what um, the author, Barbara, she's become very, very passionate about finding out. You know, she's gone from maths. And I think, you know, quilting, it, it's gone on beautifully, hasn't it? A bit of maths uh, and all of these designs. It really suits her. But what she's discovered is this absolute love of history. And that just oozes through with the book. You know, you can really tell that she's been so taken. She's gone and she's done research on the family as well. So you start to learn about this Lady Jane, which is so unusual to have a quilt where you can actually have that history that goes with it which is really beautiful so here's the book you're getting 225 different blocks because that's how the quilt was made 
Let me find you the picture of the actual quilt in here. It's a really beautiful trip through history. There it is. 13 pence a template. This always reminds me, a friend of mine, her, her husband is in the army, and I've never known anyone who works so hard. And I realize now it's because when he's away, it, she just wants to be busy. And I think that was, that was the premise behind the quilt. It was the men folk were away, and she wanted to be busy. So she did make it as complex as she possibly could. Back in the day, you know, we're talking back in the day, in the 1800s, when we didn't have all of the tools and bits and bobs that we have today, they didn't have freezer paper with a plastic coating on. No, they didn't. But what they did have, and look, she's even counted it. On this quilt, she's pieced 5,602 pieces. Isn't that gorgeous? And there's her, there's her signature. You've even got in there the pattern if you wanted to recreate that, you wanted to embroider that on. So that's $29.99. So just a beautiful, beautiful trip through history. There they are. And this is the beauty of it is that that's how it looks. That's the position of it. So you've got like a grid reference. That's it. And that's your template for it. After the break, we have got Joe Carter's lion. She's not lion. Oh, he's a bit drunk. Where, where is he? Look, oh, look at him. Are we looking at him? Look at him. Oh, hey, look, as soon as he lifts up his head, he's a, he's a very, very happy chap, and he will be coming up after this short break. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Hi, I'm Lucy Brennan and these are my three top tips. My first top tip is to experiment. It's really about um, playing and using all the different features of your sewing machine. So for example, when I was quilting this quilt, I used um, a wavy quilting stitch, which gives a really lovely texture to the quilt. So it's worth having a play about and using um, scraps or little quilt sandwiches um, to try different things. My second top tip is about combining fabric. A lot of people um, like getting the pre-cuts, which are fantastic. That gives you a whole range of a collection, but it doesn't mean that you just have to use those together. It can be nice to mix them in with other fabrics that you've got in your stash, or mix them in with solids and create something really unique. My third top tip is sometimes you just need to go for it. You can't always plan everything out. So you might combine fabrics, be making a block, and it not look exactly how you wanted it to. But until you sew it together, you don't always know how it looks. And there's always a way of combining things and making it look right in the end. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at the Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK-based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products excluding custom-cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. For this tutorial, we're going to be doing something called a tacking stitch. Now, it's very, very similar. In fact, it's the same as a running stitch, but this time it's going to be a lot bigger um, so you can remove the stitches later because it's a temporary stitch. At the back, we're going to go through the front. So if I go through the fabric first, so this time you can see that I'm making these stitches a lot bigger because this is just a temporary stitch that I want to be able to remove a lot easier. If I just do another couple of stitches for you. So what you'll be able to do when you get uh, at home and you want to remove the stitches, you should just be able to pull those out nice and easily.
as a Leo, this is my hour. Look at him. Uh, so here is our lion. It's our Joe Carter lion. He's a happy lion. He is a super happy lion. Honestly, in the break, things that you never think that you're going to hear at work. And, uh, and all I could hear through my, through my earpiece was, so has anyone got a, a big lion's head to put in the plasma? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> they obviously did. <laughs> there he is. That's actually the same size as my head, isn't it? If I'd have done bigger hair, it would have matched. Anyway, you can make your own lion. Two of them, in fact, with each of these kits. Each kit does make two. So there's no arguing over it. Um, would you do the main on both? Would you have a would you have a, a, a lady lion? Nah, <sighs> two two boy lions. So um, I've got three different kits for you for you to decide. And there's just a slight change in in colour variation. So a bit of choice for you. But here we go. Each one will have your black skein so that you can put in whiskers, smiley face and eyes. Full instructions, here we go. And templates. So if you're buying that template plastic and you know that you're going to be making a few of these, I saw how many Easter bunnies you lot made. My word. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Step-by-step -step instructions and then your template. So maybe you don't want to cut into this. Maybe you want to use your template plastic. Oh, look at that. There's his mane. Well, it looks a bit like a halo. Angelic, angelic lion. There we go. So uh, you've got paws and all sorts in there. Enough to make two lions. These are the jungle kings. Now, you're getting a meter of fabric. You're also getting um, two uh, threads as well. This is your conquer in your spray time. And then you'll be amazed at the maze that you get. Now, don't forget you get your toy filling. No, I mean that. So you've got enough toy filling there for you too. It depends how stuffed you like these things, isn't it? So there we go. You've got ample to play with there. Now the next one, you're getting toy stuffing in all of these, but it gets in the way, so I'm just keep, going to keep it down there. Again, you've got your skein, and you've got your two different threads there. Again, full instructions. But look, this is Donald, uh, and Donald is from <laughs> your Devon County fabric. So we're going, yeah, we're going a bit, um, a bit or not authentic. What's the word I want? Antiquey. And there's his mane, which is again your spray time. So this is a brand new combination to today, twenty four ninety nine. Very fancy schmancy fabrics in that one. Lovely. And then the last one. This one is going to give you a plain fabric, a plain mane, a plain mane. There's your plain mane, and then you've got your linear. So a bit of texture for his body. And that's 24.99. So this is just going to be down to personal choice. Of course, you've got your threads as well. We've matched the thread for you. You've got your filling. You've got your instructions. You've got everything you need to have a right roaring time. Oh, yeah. Now, the lady behind the design. It's, of course, Joe Carter. Well done, Joe. You've surpassed yourself again. Thank you. He has been to air before, hasn't he? He has. Just the once, though, I think. I love him. With all of your toys, there are juicy bits. Yes. And today's juicy bits are? Um, the way that the arms go in at the side is not necessarily standard for my patterns, and the mane is a okay. bit of something. Well, nothing else has a mane quite like it, do they? So they're the two different features of the, the lion. Okay. Most other ones. And are they the bits that we're going to have a little focus on? Yes, I'll put the face together first okay. so we're ready to then add the mane in. Can I have the instructions there and open just in case? <laughs> but I'll start off with the face. What's so. it worth? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, a show. It's worth a show, <laughs> else I'll have to make it myself. There you go. <laughs> I am Anything else I can get for you, Joe? <laughs> I am, I'm interested in what might happen if I didn't. <laughs> I just totally freestyled it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it might not look quite, you know, it might be more Picasso-esque if I yeah. have to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Although your instructions are very clear. Okay. Uh, <laughs> digging. Let's just quickly carry <laughs> quickly on. on. Yeah. So, uh, the face... Ah, oh, no, I like what you've done here. It's all, it's all sort of looking... This is the way the face goes together. 
with the nose in the centre. But I'll, I'll make the ears first so they're ready to go. I've done one already. Excellent. So this is the front ear. It's wider. It's a different shape to the back one so that we can have that fold in the ear and it just gives it a little bit more interest. Now, I'm <laughs> used to these now with the ears. I'm like, I, because I used to look at it and think, what? Yes, this curve here is the same size as this one here. It's just a slightly different shape. And off we go. Off already, we go. already getting into the ears. Fabulous. Have you made these already? In which case, we'd love to see your photos. And uh, you can send your photos in via email, which is studio at sandquarter dot. Is it com? Yeah, it is dot com, isn't it? Yes, there we go. Um, and Joe, when we start this off with the ear, do you do like a forwards and backwards stitch or do you not bother? I always do. Always oh, you always do. Because toys, they get a little bit more um, yes. wear and... Yes, on the seams. So we, we don't want any of them opening up. And with a curve like this, it is quite a small curve. But just do a few stitches and then you can reposition the fabric by lifting the press of foot but keeping the needle down through the fabric. OK. Now, what I like about this one is that this is, you know, sometimes we say if you, we, we give the eyes separately, but here these are embroidered eyes, so this will be suitable for smaller children. You know, normally when there are little parts, you know, we have to say, look, just hand embroider in those, those parts. But here, it's already the case that the eyes are going to be in there and the ears are looking great. And the, there's quite a lot going on on his face with his smile and then his little, are they freckles? Well, I <laughs> thought they were the inserts for his whiskers. For his whiskers, yes. Boy needs good whiskers. He does, but they do have a slightly freckly look about them, don't they? Put out in the sun. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it is, yes, it's fine. Yeah. It makes him look happy. So now what are we up to here? Around the curve, I'm just going to take out V-shaped notches. OK. Around the curve in the ear, just so that it removes some of the bulk so you get a smoother finish around the curve of the ear. So I've done that. And then turn it the right way out and just give the seam a good roll. And you know, I still haven't quite got this. With something this size, and give it a bit of a roll and a... And, and a jiggle. And a jiggle, and it should move into quite a nice curve. There we go. Oh, perfect. And then I've folded this ear that way, so I'm going to fold this ear so it's a mirror image okay. the other way. So just line up the raw edges so that a fold forms. So you just like push that. it one way and then push it back on itself the other? Yes, so I've made that fit the long... Oh, I see. Oh, so that, that, that V shape actually is the length of that. It fits across there and then fold it back ah, like that. Okay. It's not always exactly the same length, but... Um, Today? I was having a good day, <laughs> clearly. Today happily. It's working. Perfect. Um, now... Step-by-step -step instructions. This is what we love about Joe Carter's makes. Uh, so what happens is Joe will make the make. She'll take photos as she goes, writes down the instructions. This then gets sent to our technical team, and they will then pop them into instructions, make sure it all makes sense, and that we're all happy with them. Pop it all together. And there it is. Director Mike says, did you take these pictures? I did, yeah. Yes. I think he's impressed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And that's coming from award-winning director, <laughs> Mike. Not just, you know, any old director. Let's give him his full title, award-winning director, Mike. Hollywood, yeah, we were looking at a movie that he's in the other day. Just lots of extra work and stuff. Uh, I'll have to have a look later. Yeah, we'll have a look. Oh, did they cut all his scenes? Oh, dear. OK, <laughs> don't, don't worry then. Right. Okay. Ears. Ear, ear. So I've done the ears. They can mm -hmm. go to one side. And then the nose. This is the middle face piece, and I've transferred the markings. They're only for using plastic eyes, but they're on the template. If you've got some and you want to use them. Well, generally, our kits will make two animals or whatever it is, but the kits of eyes come in threes. Yes. So you might have a, a, a kit left over. And that would change his look all over again, wouldn't it, if you put, it would. if you put those eyes in? It would. So the nose, the top of the nose just sews across the bottom of the middle face. And then I'll pop this on and then I'll close. There's a little dart in the top of the middle face just to give the top of the head a bit more roundness. So I'll close that as well. He does have a look. He looks like a sun, doesn't he? He looks like a beautiful, happy, sunny sun. There we go. So the nose is on and this forms 
So it's a triangular piece then. Okay. Do you need to press that or do you just finger press it? No, I just finger press it. Maybe if I could, uh, and then I've marked the dart, but not actually cut it in. There we go. So it's just a really tiny straight dart. It doesn't even open out in a V shape. It just gives it a very tiny bit of shaping at the top. Okay. So I'm going to bring this, fold it in half. Now the end of the dart finishes here. Right. Get some fluff on there. But to taper the end of the dart, it's going to finish quite away from the actual end of the cut. So don't worry about that. So don't worry about that, no. Hang on, which way did you do it? There. So are you going to start from there or from there? Which end? With cotton fabric, I always go from the cut edge and end on the fold. Okay. So then I can sort of taper it in nice and smoothly nice. and finish there. Loads of you coming in for this one and uh, popping him in your basket. So thank you ever so much. Please do check out everything you need is in the kit, which is fab, um, even down to the different threads. So it's actually making two, two kings of the jungle. There's no fighting over who needs what. You've got two there, so share nicely. I think this is the thing. I think so many of you at home, and this, this is the feedback we had in the shows, so many buy the kit, make one with the good intention of giving it to somebody else. Mm. And then have to make another one. Yeah. yeah. Plus, once you've made one, then you know how to do it. So the second one's always much quicker and much easier. Yeah. Easy one. Easy. There he is. Dee, 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 dee. He's just such a happy chappy. Love him. There we go. Now what? Now I want to join the side face pieces to the centre face. And this flat section here is for the side of the nose. And then pause with the needle down and pivot to do this next section. So pivot at this corner. Okay. And I like to keep the middle face piece on top each time. So this time I'm going to sew from the bottom of the nose up. But when I do the other side, I'll go in the opposite direction. You'll spin it around. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Um, as your faces go. Yes. <laughs> Multifaceted Joe. Um, this actually feels like quite a, quite an easy beginner one. It is. It's not. If there's something unusual or a little bit tricky in a pattern, I like to make it easier somewhere else. Okay. So because this has got the mane, which is circular and it's a curve and all the rest of it. Sorry, the machine's telling me off. Um, I like to keep the limbs nice and easy and straightforward. And so you put the needle down, then rearrange that fabric. Just readjusted it with the needle down at that corner of the nose. Fab. Okay. There we go. And that's one side on. See, that's where I paused with the needle down for that corner there. Yeah, Better. just so it's giving you a... And then if I turn it the right way, you start to see. It gives some shaping already, doesn't it? It does. That's the side of Fab. the face. Well, I can't get used to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll do this side, and this time I'm starting at the top. Okay. We'll pivot there again, and I want to finish at these stitches. I don't want to stitch over it into the seam allowance here because it will cause it can cause a little bit of gather in the end of the nose. When you, um, dealing with these facial features is very important, isn't it? Because that's the first thing that you look at, isn't it? It is. I don't want a wrinkly nose. <laughs> Now, I think the really nice thing about this particular fabric is if, you're, uh, if you are new and you're trying to decide which one to go for, then actually having, having this particular body colour, you're not worrying about which way is the right way or, or anything like that because it's the same both sides. Whereas if you're, if you're, if you're struggling to choose which one to go for, maybe that's going to be the, the deciding point, is that actually the body on this is your, is your plane, so it's, it's, easy to, it's easy to work with. It says, I'm working with cotton. It doesn't have the stretch, but you, you can see the edge. Yeah. And it's really easy to match them up, so it's easier in that respect. So that's the face pretty much together. So I'm just going to base the ears now. So the front of the ears against the right side of the face. And I'm going to... Oh, it's amazing when you put them like that. You just look sad all of a sudden with little droopy ears. But they will he'll perk up later. Right, and then I'll start on the mane. So if you have got this in your basket, please do check out. That's the only way to secure it. Don't want you missing out. Um, yeah, lots of people do miss out on Jerry's basket. It's only produced for. Is there a favourite this morning, Paul? The one that we're demoing with right now. Yeah. It's kind of your classic lion, I like to think. It is. The concentration to Sorry. get that ear in the right place. And I've put hand cream on for... 
so my hands were looking at flipping. I know, I had a laugh at you as I came <laughs> off air. I was like, yep, I did that before I went into air and then left greasy marks all over the rulers. There we go. So you can see that sort of face coming together. He's looking good. He's looking very good already. Already. He almost looks bear-like, actually, doesn't he? But that's all going to change with the mane. OK, the mane is quilted, and to give it that depth, I put both main pieces, I've got two out, put them together, right sides together, on top of a piece of wadding that's larger overall right. than the mane. So the wadding goes on the bottom? The wadding goes on the bottom, yes. OK. And I might give these a little pin together. So we're going to sew around this outer curve. Yeah. Going through all three layers. Do I need a walking foot? You don't need, I'm not going to use a walking foot for this. Okay. You don't need one. If you have one, it's always a good idea to put it on. It makes okay. life easier. This is very unusual to see you pin, Joe. I know. I'll Just be honest, if I was at out. home, I wouldn't pin it. Oh, really? <laughs> no. See? See how special you are. Joe's pinning just feel, for you. Yes, I feel the need to do things properly. <laughs> okay. So I'm just sewing around this outer edge. Oh, you really are pinning. And the seam allowance on these are quarter of an inch. Okay. Um, six millimeters. Okay. So I've set the, the needle position on this so that I can work to the edge of the foot. I've moved the needle over, so I've got a quarter of an inch. That's the joy of this machine. This is the excellent 680. You are actually one of our guests. We had this on a deal over the weekend um, with a lovely bundle, and because um, it's back in stock now. And we did say you are one of our designers who loved working with this so much on the shows. I did. You went home and, you, well, you bought one from us, didn't you? I did. Well, it got to the point, because I, I, I would use this so much here, I would notice the difference when I got home and oh, it's I just didn't the same. look forward to using my own machine. Oh no, but you've got to but have got... you. It is, it's getting the right tools for the job. Yes. And you've got to have something that you want to go and work with. So a quarter of an inch around the outside. Why do we start with the outside and not the inside? The inside is, that's where it joins to the face. Oh, okay. It's not too tight a curve, actually, is it? It's, it's not. It's, it's, it's not too bad. There we go. We're at this piece here. Just so you can see step by step, that's where we're at. And we're about to do this bit. So now I'm going to trim away the excess. So it's going to look like that. Yeah. You are on step number five, Joe. You'll step be pleased to know. <laughs> and what time? Oh, just time it's, is going. It's it's going all right. I have got a part made one, so I can uh, swap. I bet your workroom is just stuff full of bits of limbs and. It is. They all gather on the windowsill. Bits of various toys. When I was a kid, um, I was horse mad and my mum used to drive me quite away for, for riding lessons. Um, I always remember there was a house we used to drive past and um, they had like a, a doll's leg, like a mannequin's leg upside down in the window. Oh. Like, like an like an ornament. I can, I, can still, I can still picture it in my head now. So maybe people drive past your home and just <laughs> see various toy parts in the window and just go, oh yeah. It would be the neighbours at the back because my sewing room's at the back. They look out of their bedroom windows and think, what is going on What's in going that room? Because <laughs> <laughs> you can just hang them as decorations. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll remove that and now I'm going to trim. Do we need to snip in? Yes, okay. notches around here. Right. And then I'm going to flip it the right way, pin the edges to keep them together. I'll do this really quickly. And then, can I use Quilts. my pinking shears for this bit? You could do if you wanted. So I'm trying to go too quickly now and I'll end up but I have taking to say, my finger off. Great oh no, don't do that. Yes. Great, <laughs> great sharp shizzes. They are, they're really good, these ones. Don't let anybody 
protect them, their paper. Well, you know, the, what you see is when people's scissors aren't sharp enough, they try and cut it from the join. Yes. And, and then, Didn't. yeah, that way. And you just can't get the same amount of accuracy, can you? You can't. I've cut through um, seams before now from trying to do it that way. So actually, again, it's tools for the job, isn't it? It is, because if you're using the ends, you just don't put them in far enough so that you won't snip through yeah. the thread. Whereas there's always there that go. ability to snip otherwise. Okay. And then I'm going to flip this. You could give it a press on a warm iron. Right. But you don't want to do it too much, otherwise it will take some of the body, the squidginess out of it. Okay. So and this rolling roll. technique, I need to perfect this rolling technique. Let's give that a quick roll. Right, I'll speed up. And then I'm just going to pin these edges just to keep them even more than anything. Okay. But where the... Wadding. The says, Don't worry, you've got over half an hour. I know, I'm rushing too much now. Um, I'll trim this extra wadding off later. But I'm just going to quilt now, and I just use a zigzag pattern. I don't even draw it on, I just. And do you quilt that it. all the way to the edge? I stop just sort of oh, maybe an eighth in at either end. Okay, so you don't, you don't do it leaving the seam allowance or anything no. like that? Before I sew this in, I am also going to trim. Um, oh, okay. Clip just so it opens out a, out a little bit more because this is quite a tight curve when we add it in later. But it's these little step by step bits that we need to know. Um, the joy of your instructions, it's written, it's photographed, and you see the show. So, whichever way you learn, I've got it covered. Right, so I'm just going to start and use whichever colour thread. I've gone for this orangey one just so it shows up as yes. I'm sewing so people can see. If you have a walking foot, you can use a walking foot. But We discovered the other day on the shows the number of people that actually have walking feet and are too scared to put them on. <laughs> walking foot fear. Yeah, walking foot fear, that's it's exactly it is. And I, can, I understand that, because you've got to unscrew more than just, you know, normally when you change your foot, you just unclip it, don't you? But this, you've got to actually get a tool out. It's more labour intensive, Yeah, isn't it, it is, isn't it? So I'm just sewing backwards and forwards with no particular plan in mind, really. Yeah, just to get there, just to get around there. Yeah. And it does, it gives it a sort of sunshiny... That's what I see when I look at him, his beautiful round face, haloed with, with this sunshine mane. I, I just adore him. There he is. Now, if you've already made him, let's see, let's see your pictures. And what did you call him? Oh, yeah, lots of you uh, gave him a name last time. Well, we call him Lionel. Lionel's nice. I, I like. think Lionel's quite nice. Larry, Leo. I'm terrible with names, so. Or Pete. Pete. Yeah. Oh, I finally wrote, you know, um, Rory, that's another good lion name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, my son has named um, our unborn child Knuckles. Which is an excellent name. <laughs> Knuckles McCarty. I finally realised where he's got it from, because Steve and I have both been scratching our heads going, where on earth has our foyer got the name Knuckles from? It's, um, it's Paddington 2. Uh, oh, in yeah, I know yeah, where he puts his, his and he's got knuckles written across <laughs> the wrong way around on his on his hand. It's like, oh, that's where it is. See the joy of the Easter holiday, catching up on all these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Going, oh, I get it now. I love right, having whilst you finish that off, Jo, okay, I'm going to go over here and have a look so that you can decide which kid you want. Now. Here we go. You're getting great instructions with every single one. This comes with your templates. And that's at $24.99. Not just for that. You also get your fabric and your thread. And you can make two. Ta-da! Which is fab. Um, now, here we go. This is your, I want to say, well, no, it's conquer, isn't it? There you go. Well, of course he's conquering, isn't he? He's the, uh, he's the king of the jungle. So he's going to conquer everything. That's your conquer for the main. And then you've got your maze for the body. Amazing, yeah, we're all saying that. Uh, and then there are your threads, there's your embroidery skein and your instructions, and of course your stuffing as well. Don't forget you've got stuffing there too. Okay, that is option number one. 
brand new today is, is quite a classic. So Devon County, of course, your instructions, your wadding and your matching threads. But how about a bit of Devon County Donald? I love that they all have people's names. So there's your Devon County Donald. So that could be his body. And then your mane is the same as the other one, which is your conker spray time. $24.99. Just gives it a different look. Gives it a different look. Uh, there we go. And then the last one, you've got a deeper colored mane on this one. So maybe you want to really go to town with your, uh, um, with your quilting on that. And that you use, you use such a small amount here. You're going to have loads of the brown left over. And then, oh, it's chocolate. Not just, not just any old brown, it's chocolate. And then you get your linear fabric there. So again, giving you te texture and depth, which is what we love. And look, 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 look how well those threads match. That's, it's that little detail, isn't it? Devil's in the detail. And of course, you also get your wadding as well in there and your fill instructions. Enough to make two. Oh, producer Paul says you need to start checking out on that. Or else you'll be disappointed. I don't want anyone disappointed. Let's not be disappointed. It's a Thursday, although I keep thinking it's Monday. I'm very confused. <laughs> So this excess wadding now on the inner edge, I'm just going to trim that away, just so I can see I have a nice clear edge for when I'm sewing. I'm, I'm noticing this is becoming quite an important thing for you because that is one of the things you warn against when using any of the furry fabrics, is just to allow enough that you know you have caught the edge and not just fur. Yes. And so here, cut away so that you've got that nice clean edge to work with. And then I'm going to, if, you, if your quilting doesn't hold this edge together enough, sometimes I'd whiz another line of stitching around there just to keep them fixed together. Oh, really? Check also that they're level on both sides and it's not short. The fabric hasn't slipped away on one side because they need to be the same. Oh, I see what depth. you mean. Yes. And now I'm just going to clip inside the seam allowance. I don't want these clips to extend. I don't want them to be visible well, once it's sewn in place. Stuffing, wouldn't you? you would. Just clipping along here just means that it will open out a little bit. Does that just more. make it easier to sew? It does. It helps it. Helps it stretch around and you're not, you don't fight with it as much. Making these clips, I'm taking care to avoid the stitching as well. It's a minefield. It's a, it's a minefield. But so worth it. I mean, he just is such a happy chappy, isn't he? There we go. Right, and now I'm going to baste the mane to the face. Ah, oh, this is where it all starts to come alive, isn't it? So if you use a coordinating thread, this shouldn't show up. If you don't stick religiously to inside the seam allowance, um, if some stitches show, if it's a coordinating thread, it's fine. It won't. Uh, the visible. thing is, so does it need to be coordinating with the face or with the mane? Hang on, I'll have to work this out now. <laughs> you see, there you go. You talked about coordinating threads. Which way round? I don't know. I'll have to tell you in a minute. <laughs> okay, I've done it. We'll soon find out. We'll soon find out. I don't out. want to commit. <laughs> if you can see stitching, though, they can just come out. Okay. Right, I'm basting, so I'm not going to go forwards and backwards at the beginning. Oh, you baste in first? So I'm basting this in first because later on it's going to be fixed properly to the body. Oh, that's where this head is different, isn't it? Yes. So often you'll have a... We, we do the back head regularly, don't we? Yes. Uh, on the show. But actually, the back head is all one piece with the body. This... I think this is a great starter kit. If somebody's just starting out making toys... Look at him. Maybe you've got a jungle theme going, or maybe, you know, maybe this is your star sign if you're an August baby, like me. Then you're a Leo. Just going to open that door. Actually, it's, it, uh, lions are one of those things that lots of people collect, like owls and frogs. It's another of those animals that people seem to collect. So if you've got any ideas for names, we'd love to give them a name. Because otherwise, so far, we're stuck on Pete. How did we get Pete? Pete the lion. That was your suggestion, wasn't it, Producer Paul? And why not? It's a very fine name for a lion. I think of it, associate it more with dragons. Pete the dragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
Okay, so we need we need your naming suggestions. Now, lots of you buying for the first time today. If you are buying for the first time today, if this is your first ever Joe Carter kit, well, well done. Uh, and secondly, you'll get a free gift as well because you're spending over £10. So new buyer today, and we're getting all the time as word spreads that there is a dedicated uh, sewing channel out there. Uh, then here it is. This is your dressmaker's scissors worth £9.99. You don't have to put in a code or anything like that. We'll just send it to you. All you need to do is just check out your basket and you can check out as many times as you like throughout the day. We only charge you one PMP. Hang on, there's thought <laughs> happening here. Joe's gone quiet. What's happening, Joe? I think it's fine. I didn't coordinate with either. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a thread. My brain's Any just thread. not working. The threads coordinate beautifully with either colour. One way or another, you're going to get a colour, aren't you, that, because it's yes. yellow on, on, the, on the main brown. I don't think you'll see it at all, actually. I think I was inventing a problem that wasn't really there. Well, that's right. I like that you've solved it. I like that can-do attitude. Yes. <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I think possibly I was, yes, inventing a problem. But there we go. There's the face. Now, this is this has worked beautifully around there. Did I need at any point to mark off my sort of halfway points or anything to make sure I stayed on track? Yes. On the template, this is the center point, so it will correspond. If you pop that mark in, right. you know that that corresponds with the center at the top there, and these are where the ears are. Oh, so, so you've got those little checkpoints. So if you transfer those onto the main, and you can check that it's running, right. it's in position, everything's lining up. Look at him. Just look at him already. He's looking good. Uh, Mo in the Island says, name for the lion. Caprio. That's a cute name. I wonder where that came from, where that inspiration came from. Caprio. Yes. Um, with things like this, circular sort of inserted pieces, so you get them with turtles and tortoise shells as well. With this one, so that to deal with these raw edges, because we don't want them visible, you could sew it and then have these raw edges free and then you have to hand sew them at the end or to avoid that with this pattern, mm. they both go into the seam ah, later okay. on. So don't, at this point, don't worry don't about worry. these. Um, these raw edges, sorry, Lion. Um, it's Leonardo DiCaprio, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Leo, yeah. It takes us a while, Mo, but we do get there eventually. I was thinking, Caprio, Caprio, why do I know that? that <laughs> oh, yes, Leonardo DiCaprio. I am so not. <laughs> you're engrossed. Speed. You're, yes. you're concentrating, you're engrossed, that's fine. I was so prepared for this show, I thought there's bound to be something I've forgotten. What have you forgotten? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find, find it. Out. We're still yet to find out. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> We've got another 25 minutes to find out what you've forgotten. <laughs> yes, it will be something, but uh, so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> the arms and the legs are really straightforward to make up for the mane. That's okay. the trade-off. Um, they just fold over. And then so length along the length and around the bottom, leaving this top end open. Now, do we have to taper carefully around this bit? Yes, a taper is a good idea because we're so around here like that. If you if you go straight off there, you'll just have a little corner here. Mm. Is that? Whereas mm. if you taper it up, follow it round, just round it off a little bit. Taper it up there, and you'll get a smoother finish in the end. It'll sort of mirror the other side yeah. a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. I, this is where I think I would draw on my seam lances when I, when I, the first one that you do. Yes, it does help actually. Yeah. So I'll sew this one now and then okay. I'll follow that line. But the arms are the same, it just has a different angle top. Okay. And oh, that's yeah. just so that the arms sort of are pointed downwards a little bit rather than they come straight out of the sides otherwise. Oh, I see what you mean. They sort of slope. You have a shoulder slope. This little tail. We haven't focused on his tail. Look at that. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Sarah says, what about Hunter for a name? Well, that's a good name. Yeah. He looks very, very happy to be a hun happy hunter. Be a happy hunter. And Christine says, morning. Richard the Lion. Oh, yeah. Richard yeah. the Lion. Lionheart. Yeah. Uh, says Christine from sunny Suffolk. And um, what about a lioness? Says someone who hasn't, who hasn't put their name on there. But just, just, just leave just out the main. Leave out the main. I'm trying to think how he could. Um, she needs. She'd need something. Yeah. 
to give her a little a little bit of interest. You can't just have the male one. May, maybe some lashes. Since yes, that would be, cool. yes, eyelashes would be good. <laughs> <laughs> now, you do get enough in the kit for two. So, you know, if you did want to adapt and make yourself a lioness, then you, then you can. Well, maybe you could make a, a narrower mane and do it in the same colour, do it in the same sort of maize colour. Would that work? That would be a good idea. Yeah, I think that would work really nicely. I think eyelashes, a coordinating mane, a shorter yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And then... I don't know, I, I'm, I'm trying to steer away from saying a little bow because it's so gender specific. And <laughs> That's all right, you but often see them out in the Serengeti with a little bow. A little bow, but they're so easy to add, the detail which is so easy, easy to, to spot then, aren't they? Yes. So easy to spot. I mean, the gazelles can see them coming yeah. a mile Absolutely. off. Absolutely. They'll be a distraction. They'll be so busy looking at the bow, they won't realise what's happening. It's true, they send one out with a massive bow yes. and then the others. Which is very on trend right now, I see, amongst the kids. <laughs> the kids and the lions. <laughs> Good, right. Right, so I've done a leg, tapered the end and clipped notches around the curve. Same for the arm. Then turn them out the right way. I have some pre-made arms of and legs. Of course you do. Of because it takes a do. while actually to stuff them. It's not, it's just so you have extra to hang from your window for the neighbours to talk. Yes, these, some of these were spares. Do they know what you do? No, I don't think any of the neighbours, they've never asked. Probably too scared to they see various <laughs> body parts hanging from your window. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and just always come out covered in thread as well. It's a good look. So I've stuffed these. The top bit is not so densely stuffed. Sort of the a thumb's width to leave that empty, and it just makes it easier to fit into the seams. Okay. And then I basted these closed just to hold the edges together and lined up at the top, and to hold the stuffing in place. Right, so we've done those. So I'll move those spare bits. And then this is the weird looking body shape. It does oh, look do odd. you know what, Joe? We've done well. We've done we've done nearly 40 minutes without a weird body shape. This is a weird body shape. Yeah, no, I'm with you. That's weird. This giant dart here is here. It gives it a little bit of shape, but it's to put the arm in. And it's so that the back body and the stomach and the back of the head are all one piece. So, so it, it will make life easier. Yes. Okay. Right, so I believe you. Trust me. I've done a lot of Trust me, I'm a lion doctor. No, she's not lion. That's the thing. <laughs> I've done a lot. I had to get my youngest onto a toboggan ride. That he, we bought tickets, and as soon as he saw it, he decided he didn't want to go. So I had to say, trust me. Do you trust me? Oh, <laughs> and did he? That's where the children no, go, no. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that shatters all of that one. Because apparently there was a time I didn't get rid of a spider, and I said I would. Oh, no. Oh, no. Happy but, childhood memories. <laughs> Storing the spider, them up. A spider had run off by that point. <laughs> you were too slow. So there we go. This is the dart in the side for the arm. And I've popped the arm, folded side up, folded side at the top of the dart, and I've pinned it in position. Actually, I've put the pins on the wrong side, so I'll swap those over. Because I like to sew from the bottom and finish at the top so I can taper it. OK. Have the raw edges of the arm visible, sticking through, so you know that they're, it's well held. It's definitely got the seam allowance. Would you least. baste that in first? You could baste it in by hand if you wanted to make sure that it's fixed in place. I would just go for it. I'd just pin it. The thing with... I know, I know. Pinning it, you want to make sure that the sides of the dart are level. That's the thing that could go awry with this. Okay. And also make sure that your um, pins are the sides so you can take them out. Yes, I put okay. them in the wrong side, so I'm just swapping them over. There we go. Oh, make sure you check out, says producer Paul, because every time we bring Joe Carter to toys, they're very, very popular. So $24.99 here for your lion kit. Lovely project. Actually a great starter toy, I think. Or if yeah. you just need if you just need a lion in a lion in a hurry, then you're good to go. Get the grandkids involved. That that lovely feeling of of achieving, isn't it? Especially yes. with, with the little ones. And then you can make one, they can make one. And then you are, you know, bonded by lions. I like that. So doing this dart, you could use a wider stitch length first. So you did baste it in and then okay. if you're happy with it, sew over it. If yeah. not, whip out those stitches and go again. But you do then have that option, don't you? You do. 
So I'm just going to sew. I'm now up past the top of the arm and I'm just going to carry it on and just taper it in. So you don't go backwards and forwards over that arm to reinforce it? Well, have a check. So I've got the seam allowance on that side yeah. and I've got the seam allowance on that side and it's well held in position there. Okay. And then once I was happy with that, then I'd go over it because if you went over it before checking, chances are that would be the time that it you wasn't quite right. You have one yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. But the arms, I mean, because he's... And the arms are such a lovely size. You know, I can, little ones are going to swing them around by the arm, aren't they? That's... Yes. Reinforce them. I just made a little one. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And make sure you don't make two bodies the same way. I was just double checking then. I want this one done like that. So then oh, this images. is the only downside then, isn't it, to having fabric that's the same both ways? Yes. Is that you do then need to actually check you're sewing it in the right way. And also that the arm is going in the right direction. I always pull it back so that I check. Just check it's not. Yeah. Although maybe you could have. A waving lion. Yes. Uh, Jean in Essex says, good morning, girls. I think you will find that female lions don't have a mane. Yeah, no, we know that, Jean, but it is just otherwise, she's just going to look a little bit bald. Yeah. So we were trying to find a way that she didn't have a full mane, but she didn't look... She needs some sort of accessory, bald. doesn't yes. she? Too. Hence the bow, if you're not going to put on a mane. That was, that was where we were going. Yeah. Some sort of hat. <laughs> Some description. <laughs> hat. It's all right. Producer Paul says you could make her pregnant and give her a big belly. I don't know why he was thinking <laughs> that. <laughs> there we go. So I've, I've pinned again, arm in the top of the dart, pinned in position. Raw edges through so you can see them. Yes. Right. And I'm starting from the bottom of the dart. And take it nice and slowly and just check that those edges are together. Every time you say raw edges, oh, she's yeah. laughing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just take that pin out. Are you doing this? I know you said to do it on a long stitch first, but are you just going for it? I'm just going yeah. for it, yeah. Yes. 24 99 makes you two lions as well. And that's, uh, so that's really lovely. Now, we've got about 10 minutes left of this demo, Jo, just okay. so that you know. That's okay, both sides. I'll just over sew that one. And then the next bit is to join. Oh, I, I will check with the pattern, but I think it's to join head to body. So, hang on, where are we? Where are we? Where? Oh, no, here we go. Jo, I'll show Joe as well in a minute so she knows. <laughs> if, you, if you would, that'd <laughs> yeah, be really no, helpful. Fine. Look, you see, Joe, look, we've just done that bit. <laughs> okay. And then we've got to do that bit. Am I joining? And then it's like a hand puppet there. It does. I've yeah. got one at a hand puppet stage, actually. Yeah. OK, uh, so, yeah. So we've done join the body pieces right sides together and sew from top along the back for approximately 10 centimetres. This is the back of the head section. This is it. So the two body bits with the arms in, sew from the top along the back to about here, just to join them, and then we can fit the face in. OK. Because he is sewn up down the back. I yes. bet Eugene was shouting at the TV. They don't have manes. They don't have manes, lionesses. No, we know. Uh, so uh, let me see. That's your hand stitched bit from there to there. That's where he's going to be stuffed at the back. So we're sewing down to there. There we go. So they're joined. I finger press this open. And then I'm going to join the face. And this is a bit fiddly, but around this opening. And the dart in the top of the face will line up with this bit. Oh, clever. So you've got that reference point. That's nice. Yes. So the first bit, the way it's shaped here, it's not too difficult. Is then when we get around here, it does take a bit of stop starting, needle down and reposition. And how do I know that I've got the head around the right way? Um, right sides together. Just okay. checked that. Yes. I, I didn't know then. <laughs> I don't know, you just, I don't know, just do it. Uh, Josephine in the Old Man says, Hello, Joe and Tash. What about a little daisy or a rose behind the ear for a lion? Oh, that would look really oh, that's cute. that's nice. That's, yes, a, that's, that's the, the idea. Way. That's the way. Yeah, because you could make a little fabric rose or something, couldn't you? A little you kanzashi could. something. Yeah. Then, then, then we get away from having any sort of faux mane. Yes.
So I'm just doing a few stitches and repositioning that. And the problem that might occur here is you just want to keep the main bit that's you're sewing at the time as flat as possible, just so that no tucks appear in it. But if they do, and chances are I'll have one in this because I'm trying to rush. I'll show you how to deal with that. Okay. That looks like it's going to line up. <laughs> Take that note of surprise yeah. out. <laughs> maybe, maybe not perfectly, but good enough. So which one have you gone for? Have you gone for the, the plain body and the uh, conker head? Have you gone for the pattern body? Or have you gone the Devon County? Yeah, very nice. Well, that would look nice if you've made the Devon County quilt, wouldn't it? It'd be lovely. Oh, sat on the bed. Yeah. So, you know, just subtly, subtly going with it all. I like that. Or maybe you've got some of your Devon County fabrics left over and you could make them a little patchwork bag or something. Because we've got a bear in a bag, there's no reason why you couldn't pop a lion oh, in a, a bag. Lion in a bag, yeah. I'm chasing the pedal under here, I'm just going to have to let you. <laughs> <laughs> in a minute, I'll, be, I'll have to sit down. Uh, now, Karen says, hi, ladies. What about Rory the lion, says Karen. Yes, Rory's, Rory's a, good, a good solid lion name. Rory's perfect. Yeah. There we go. And actually, that's gone on. Because I said, there'll, Beautifully. Be a tuck, there'll be a tuck in it. Let's just have a check on the mane. It has, it's gone on really well. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! You but, sound really upset by that. Yes, I would quite like to have had... If there is a small tuck in it, don't take the whole head off. It's often easier just to unpick the few stitches involved. Sort of Give get it, a bit it of into position and then just forwards and backwards over a few stitches. Sew over the bit that you've unpicked. Forwards and backwards again. Oh, so don't feel like you've got to undo the whole thing. Patch in. Okay. Do it like that. Uh, Susan says, hi, Joan Natasha. Why not give the lioness a bonnet? A bonnet. Well, she's looking after her skin in that sun. Of course. Very, well, very sensible. Want freckles. Just like want freckles. <laughs> yeah. I think eyelashes and a bonnet looking good. Yeah. Easter bonnet. You see, very seasonal. Yes. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> right. Once... The head's on, bring the front of the body together, sandwiching in the ends of the mane and pin them so that they line up, the edges line up. And so... Oh, yeah, so you don't get a wonky mane. You don't get, yes, it's sort of stepped at the bottom. Okay. So, so along there, sandwiching in the mane and then finish at the bottom of the nose. And again, don't stitch over these stitches here. Why? What? what? Oh, it will just pull the it. nose. Yes. Okay. He's got so, such a lovely nose, you don't want to wreck his nose. This one's had that done already, and the mane lines up underneath there. Beautiful. And then I'm going to baste the legs in. And how did it? Seams to the middle. It doesn't matter whether the seam side of the leg faces outwards or inwards. Just make sure they do the same, the same. thing. Okay. So seam to the middle. Otherwise, you have two left feet. And there are markers, so I'll pop those in position. So these are all marked on your templates. It's the, the joy with Joe's designs is that step by step, you've got photographs, you've got written words, you've got the shows you can watch back. If you are going to watch back to the show, then just head to YouTube. All of our shows get um, recorded up live onto YouTube. And so you just put uh, the date, so in quarter and the date, and then it will come up. And you can fast forward and rewind on that bit as well, which you know you can't necessarily on, on Freeview. So you can, you can do that there. So then... I'll pop the legs on and then I'll do the tail. Okay. Because all this needs now to be done is the base to go on and the tail to go in. Oh, he looks fabulous. He's not far off, is he? No. I so, think this is the furthest we've ever got. How have we got? Oh, almost got. Four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, the tail, this is the tip of the tail. Just sew it across the bottom of this bit here. The, okay. The Same seam allowance throughout. Same seam allowance. And then yep. finger pressed it open. Does he have a bit of wadding in his tail? He, in the tip? He does, just in the tip, I think. But you don't have to put it in. The tail is a bit fiddly. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. He's got to flick away the flies, hasn't he, with his tail? Yeah. yeah. Fold that over and sew along the long edge and around the tip. Clip the seam allowance at the tip. And it, 
this bit, because there's a seam and it's quite narrow when it's done, it, it is a bit fiddly to get it through there. So, but gently to sort of tease it through the skewer or something like that. I've got something to help with that a bit later. Actually, next Ooh. hour. Mm. So then that's the tail. So I folded it over, stitched it, and then turned it the right way out. And, and a little bit of stuffing in the end. A little bit of stuffing in the end. I've left it out of this one. Okay. Because I forgot I had a little bit of stuffing in the end, is the <laughs> truth. Well, yeah, it's an option. It's an option. A lot of you have been saying, I've got so much stuffing left over from all of our kits. Stuff the tail. There you go. Right, I'll base the tail on now. Do this after the base, but I'll pop it on now so I don't forget it. Okay. And have you set yourself your own challenge to finish this pretty much? Is that <laughs> I would like to get it pretty much finished. Right, to do, turn the head that way. Right, pop the arms out of the way in the head. And so we've only really got the legs to deal with. And start at the back here and start, we're lining up the seam allowance there with the center point of the base. Right. So don't start, that's the center of the base. Don't match it up with the raw edge. Because the centre isn't going to be the centre. The centre will be where you've yes. sewn them up the seam allowance. Uh, Teresa says, morning, ladies. Can I suggest you seal for the lioness? Lucy? Yes, you can. You seal. Lovely. Much love, Teresa. Yeah, I like that. I like that. You seal the lioness. You don't get many new seals these days. Do you don't. You? I wonder if it'll be one that makes a comeback. I think, um, I'm just trying to think, what, what, what did we say the lion would wear? The line with a bonnet, a, the bonnet or a rose. Lucille, I think, would look good with a bonnet or a rose. Maybe the bonnet could have a rose on it. Yes. Oh, there we go. And then, and then, yeah, then there's no need for the mane. Right, I'm pivoting at that corner point, just smoothing out the fabric. Okay, make sure there's not a tuck in the leg. The base is a little bit fiddly to put on, but you do get used to them. And it, they're quite handy having a base on so that they can sit down. Well, yeah, I mean, for comfort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it can sit on its matching quilt. Absolutely. Because, you know, they're not all that active, are they, lines? You know, yeah. it comes in fits and starts. They have a lot. There's of... a lot of lounging around in the sunshine. And where there isn't stuffing right into the top of the leg, I can just keep that as flat as possible. Smooth it out, and then it's easier to sew across now at this point. Yeah, and so also, it gets a little bit more of a dangle. You know, it's, it moves a little bit nicer if it's not as much. It has a bit, a bit of a better leg dangle, yeah. is what we're looking for here at Sewing You heard it here first. Um, we've got less than a minute. I think, I think Jo's on it. I think she's on it. I think I've nearly finished the machine sewing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Excellent. I think it's the furthest we've ever got. We've done well. There we go. And then sew up the back to sandwich the tail in, but leave your opening to stuff. Okay. Turn it out this way. Stuff the head first only, and then you can access it from front and the back and sew the face on with the rest of the body still so empty. So you sew the face before you sew up the back? Yes, I okay. do, because things move about and you might want to restuff once the face, just adjust the stuffing a little bit. There he is. There he is. Jo, thank you. You're back oh, in an hour you. with a quilt, putting a different hat on. I am, eh? But this one behind us here, it's a stunner. It's beautiful. We love it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you ever so much. Right, he's coming with me. These are coming with me. Finish this one. And I'll see you in a minute. Oh, yeah, you can't leave <laughs> him, can you? Uh, OK, which one are you going for? Here he is. Uh, so he is made out of this one here. Oh, grabbing his mane. He's made from this one here. Now you get the stuffing as well, but look how well those threads go. Nice. Uh, and you also get um, your thread so you can do all the features. You also get uh, your mane and your body, half a meter of each. You can make two out of this and your stuffing. Please do check out on that one. That is the most popular today. It generally is. If it's the one that we make, it will generally be the most popular. Now, don't forget, you get full instructions and templates as well. Maybe you're going, you know, a bit traditional-like with your fabrics. And here we've got from the Devon County range, a very posh one. This is the most limited now in terms of stock out of the three now. I don't think we've ever done Devon County with the, with the toys. It's lovely. But there you go. That'll be, that'll be your look there. It's a half a metre of your Devon County Donald, half a metre of your Conker Spray Time. Full instructions, 
threads, of course, um, and your embroidery skein as well. Which fabric do you want to see? The Devon County one. This is Donald. All of the fabrics in the Devon County are named after, um, are named after people that help bring the collection to life. So it could be, that's how he's going to look. Well, possibly not like he's just got out of the bath. <laughs> it's just like... So that's, that's your options there. There we go. And then your last option, again, giving a little bit of texture for the body here, gives you the linear. I love, look at the match on those threads. It's just perfect. There we go. There's your threads there. Full instructions, wadding, thread. Let's, there's your main. So the main is a plain fabric, but you've got... So that just gives you a bit, of, a bit more texture. You just see, there you go. There you go. But you need to check out on that one as well. $24.99 for a half meter of each and your threads and your instructions and your stuffing. Now, after the break, it's Tilda time and we've got the instructions and the fabric for you to do such, such as this, which I absolutely love. Uh, we've also got bundles for you as well and brand new bundles with a couple of Tildas and then a plane just to make everything go further. So we've got all sorts coming up after this very short break. Don't go anywhere, see you in a moment. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. We've got something amazing coming for all fans of Tilda as we've got a TV exclusive on Tilda's brand new book, Sunshine Sewing. We have the TV exclusive until the end of April, so get your copy from us before anywhere else and pour over Tilda's latest sewing creations. The brand new book features three full-size quilts as well as pillows, soft toys and fabric bowls, all made in Tilda's charming style. You'll be able to delve into 12 brand new summer projects and get inspired by her countryside themed designs. So add some sunshine into your life with Tilda's brand new book, Sunshine Sewing, available on our website now. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website, www.sewingquarter.com. Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Join us on Friday the 6th of April when we're joined by toy maker Joe Carter. Joe is on the show to make her ballerina softy who is back by popular demand with a brand new lilac look. You won't want to miss Joe's expert tutorial on how to make your very own softy ballerina with an adorable top knot, a delicate tutu of lilac and embroidered facial features. Joe will be giving us all the tips and tricks you need to bring this character to life and will be sharing her knowledge of getting the finishing touches just right on your favourite softy toys. So join us as we dance away with Joe's new lilac ballerina. Tune in on Friday the 6th of April at 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.
Hello, welcome back. Now this is Tilda Hour, Tilda Time, as we like to call it. Now I've got some brand new collections for, not collections, bundles for you, where you know you know how we do it. We give you two different half meters of Tilda and then we put in a plane to make it all go further for you. That's what we've put together for you. So without further ado, should we just dive straight in with that? Yes, why not? Oh no, the Ozenberg first, yes, oh yes. Now this is back in stock. Now. This sold out so fast last time, so we've got, we've, we've got it back for you. Uh, and the reason that we bring this this hour uh, is because this is your Ozenberg. This is your natural seeded cotton Ozenberg per half a meter, £2.50. But when you're doing any of your Tilda toys, this is a really beautiful one for your toy making. Also, maybe this is going to be great for the backing of your quilts, things like that. Uh, but it's just, it's a lovely natural... It is a bit like calico, yeah, it is, and it's and it's as you know as crazy as people go for calico, just multi buyers always on this, and I just think it's a really affordable way to put a little bit of texture um, into into a lot of your toy making. I think it's lovely, really lovely, and and works very beautifully with the Tilda fabrics because it's it's not bright white, it's it's that lovely um, natural cream which works beautifully with the tones within your Tilda fabrics, of course, which is very important. It's taken us a month to get this back in stock. You know, we always say, when you see something that you absolutely want, please do get it, because, you know, when it's, when it's gone, it takes us a while to get these things back. That's how wide it is. And uh, we're going to see how if we can show you the texture, because it is, it is very natural. It's a lovely natural one, this one. You don't have to use it for toys. You can make it for your bag making. You can make. You can actually. Some people just use it for twirls as well. But because I think because of the because of the price, but producer force says put it around some pots and think what? Hey, eh? oh, around jars. Okay, there you go. Don't know what it is. 23 of you already got that in your basket. So again, you'll have to start checking out with this. Uh, the, I, I mentioned it early on, so you can just get it throughout the hour for as long as this lasts. Oh, 29 of you now, 34, oh my word. Please do check out, it's just £2.50 per half a metre. It is incredibly useful. Uh, and it just adds that little bit of texture in there. It's, it's a beautiful colour as well because it's got that texture and it's got that natural seeded cotton look. Well, it's not even, look, it is. That it is. It's exactly that. Beautiful. Now that is available by the half meter. We'll be looking. Someone <laughs> just bought 10 meters. Good on you. Good on you. And that, of course, will be cut in one continuous length. So, wow. Okay, 40 of you have now added it to your basket. Please check out your basket. I mean, we, we, we did get a large amount in, but we, wow, if you're buying it 10 meters at a time, 60 of you now have it in your basket. Whoa. Have a look at some fabrics you might want to work with it then. You want the blue one first, not the green. I've got the green in my hand. Blue one? Which blue one? I've got two blue ones. The blue and the pink. Okay. Here we go. Now then. This uh, we started. In fact, this was it was with Tilda that we we very first tried this, and and the premise was we know that you love Tilda, um, and we know of course that you know you're internet shopping effectively with us, uh, and it's very very difficult to match colours. So if you do want to make your fabrics go further, your designer fabrics go further, then a great way is to put a plain colour with it. So and that's so that was what we started doing and I do remember the very first show that I ever did with this and we sold out so quickly because it was the first time that it had ever been done. So what we've done is give you half a meter of each but you've got like the lovely lovely um fabric here uh which is kind of a retroy one and that's your boogie flower there and then this is your um lemonade fabric there with your lemons and your birds in there. And what we've done is we've found this pink. Now this is vintage pink um, and it just works absolutely beautifully. Can you see with both of those? So if you're patchworking, great. If you're, um, if you're maybe doing some of the toys, we've got lots of Tilda books on the show as well for you today. So it ju it's just a lovely way. Maybe you're making some of the bags in the books um, or, or just maybe you want it for your stash. I came in this morning and, um, you know, my, my lunch bag, 
Tilda. Tilda, and it was actually, I made it from the fabrics from the very first time that we did this, putting a plane in with them. And it's lasted and lasted. Lots of people comment on it, and I absolutely love it. Now, if the uh, this one with the orange, okay. So this one, oh, we called it yellow. I don't know why. Kind of orange. Uh, we don't. We don't name. We don't know. We're not going to name names. Here we go. So uh, this again. You've got your boogie flower here. Oh, I think this was the, the yellow. More limited on this one. But look at this lovely orange that then picks up through there. And you've also got in there that ginger. So if you've got any of the Tilda um, previous collections that have got that ginger in, then you're going to be able to pull that ginger colour out as well. But this is just all working beautifully together. It's lovely and vibrant. What a brilliant um, summer collection to go for. Really beautiful. So you can see the lemon tree coming through in the lemonade there. And again, this is where Tilda is so clever because she's got those teals. So if you've got any of her other collections and you've got the teals, then that will be the same shade of teal coming through again with the pinks. Really beautiful how she does that. And this is why it took me a little while to, to twig with Tilda was that. Uh, and it was only when I started making a quilt out of all of her different collections that I realized how beautifully they all go. That the colors, she works with a color palette, and once you start working with that color palette, you can intermingle them. So that's why people collect, you know, they just collect Tilda, they go crazy for it. Go, uh, right, should I go, or can I go with the blue hummingbird one? Love this one. Now, in here, what we've done, now, I mean, just those two together is, is just beautiful. So this is the hummingbird. And then we've picked out that. Now, I think that's going to be, is that going to be vintage blue? Let me see. Yeah, vintage blue. So we've picked out the vintage blue, which then works beautifully. And that does give you that lovely, shabby, chic feel. But then, what about working this through with it? Now, it doesn't have to all go together if you don't want it to. It could just be that, look, you've got that teal, you've got that sort of vintagey, bluey, tealy bit in there. So if I take that away, what you've actually got is it pulls out the lemons that are blue. Does that make sense? The lemons that are blue. It's got, yes, it's pulling, but it just highlights that. When you look at this fabric, the colour that's really highlighted has been pulled out from that. It's the, the lemons that are highlighted in there. But then also, you see, look at those two together. That is beautiful. So there's your hummingbird. This is what it's named for. That's your hummingbird. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to fussy cut some of that, wouldn't you? And you're getting a half a metre of each. But again, you know, this is the same colour that's in there, in the leaves, so you can work it through. So it's all working an absolute treat. Uh, we, all, we all have Tilda. It's a happy Tilda time. And that's 18 99 for a metre and a half. When you think a metre of that is your Tilda, fabulous. Fabulous. Now, um, maybe you want to go really nostalgic. Maybe you want to go real kind of shabby chic. Then how about this for a bundle? Now, this is your, this is your hummingbird with the white background. I say white. It's, got, it's an off-whitey color. And that's called dove white. So it's a much softer look. And this, um, we, we always think sort of, boudoir fabric. I think it's just really very, very pretty. But here, what we've put with it is what Tilda does so well as well, which is that small ditzy. So this is your flower field in yellow through there. And again, you're picking up uh, the deeper pinks from the flowers. You've got in here these sort of yellowy greenies, which you're picking up from the flower there. So all of these are from Tilda's latest collection, which is the Lemon Tree, inspired, would you believe, by lovely uh, hot, hot, hot summer days with pig knitting by a lemon tree. Uh, this one is the most popular, which surprises me because normally the blues go first. But I think this is such a beautiful, beautiful fabric. Now you're getting half a meter of each, but just to give you an idea of the pattern repeat on this, it is ever so pretty. 
unashamedly so. Gorgeous colours. It is quite calming, actually, isn't it? Beautiful. I can imagine, actually, uh, getting this bundle and doing a whole range of, um, of your makeup bags and going away bags and, and you know, things like that. It'd be lovely. Toiletry bags. There you go. Beautiful. Now, now oh, actually, do you know what? Just looking on the, on the set here, because in the book that we're going to look at, you do get the reverse applique cushion pattern. And actually, that, that small ditzy print that we've just seen in there would work beautifully if you were to do one of those designs. Just an idea. Just an idea. So if you want to see the other one that we've got with the, with the ditzy, I'm going red. This is limited. We don't have a lot of this. We'll just be down to how much we've got left. But look, 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 look. There you go. There's your, there's your, uh, your flower field in red. But look, you see with that pink, just beautiful. This is your pastel pink working beautifully. But equally gorgeous would be if you want to go with the hummingbird. Because the leaves in the hummingbird are that pastel -y pink. It does give it a completely different look. So maybe that's going to be your lining for something. Or maybe you're going to use that to emphasize the pink that you're pulling through there. Uh, in which case then, if you are quilting, then you've got your plain, your ditzy, and your large print all in one bundle. Really gorgeous. And this is a, a slightly more unusual colour for Tilda. It's almost like a corally colour, isn't it? In fact, she does call it coral. There you go, I'm not making that up. So it's lovely to have that slightly different tone coming through. So all the pinks working beautifully together and your teals as well. So again, if you're working this through with other collections, it's going to be gorgeous because you've got that pink and that teal that we're used to seeing in the Tilda collections. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course, what our team can do behind the scenes is put those planes together that really work tonally with it. And so you're getting extra fabric for your money there. Uh, because, you know, you've got your metre of designer fabric and then you've got a plane which just makes your fabric go a little bit further. Now, maybe... Now, I've only got two of these. Oh, I've got one more. I forgot the green. My apologies. <gasps> there I was, thinking we were done. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Here we go. So, with this... <laughs> Patricia Paul says we're done when we say I'm done. Uh, this is your green, and again, this is your lemonade. It's your lemon tree. This is your green. I think this makes a, a lovely pattern, actually, just that gentle sweep down there. Now, what we've put it with, so the lemonade, we've popped it with the boogie in green. The boogie, look at that. Really fab. So, lots of you going for the green. Please check out your baskets. We don't have a huge stock of the green, so please check out your baskets sooner rather than later. That's $18.99 for that. I love how those go together. I don't, have, um, I don't have masses of green in my stash, but the green that I do is Tilda Greens. And look at that one from afar. How pretty is that from afar? And then you're getting close, and there's lots to work with there. So this is kind of a, a mid a mid size print. So you've got that throughout the, the, the range, haven't you? You've got the Hummingbird, which is your, your large print. You've got this one, which is your mid range. Um, and then we, we saw, didn't we, that ditzy print, um, which gives you your, your, small, your small one. I just think it's beautiful. Whichever way you go, it's all going to work an absolute treat. Now, here we go. Uh, we've got, I think, two of these left. So if, and this was how I started off with my first Tilda Quilt. I'd got pre-cut. Got them all pre-cut. And then, actually, I got a fabric very, very similar to that Osenberg. Yeah, yeah, you get 40. Yeah, no, so you get, you get two of each of the designs. But there's only two left. So that you get, because there's 20 different fabrics in the range, and you get two of each, all pre-cut. So this is, uh, yeah, five, inch, five inches. So you get the full collection and two of each. So you can just see, can't you, the, the colour tones going on there. You've got all your blues through to your pinks and your plums. Two are in the basket, so if you check out. So 
We're going to end those graphics because whoever gets that first in is going to get that. I'm going to put that in my basket because I'm not expecting that to last. <coughs> I'm not expecting that to last. So um, if you do want it, you need to check out now for that because already two of you have got it in the basket. And if anybody rings up and decides they want it, you're going to lose it. So please check out your basket. Now, I've only got six of these um, on the show today. These are your fat eighths. So it's, it's your fat quarter cut in half. But you get, you get 20. So basically, you get a fat eighth of each of the different colorways. So all of the designs, there were 20 different fabric designs and colors. And you get each of them. OK? So that's, you can see how these all go. And so you are getting a little taster of all of those fabrics in this so you get the full range you get a fat eighth of the full range and that's 53.99 but we've only got six and uh, we don't get tilda back in stock by the way when it's gone it's gone uh, because we move on to her next collection so we never carry we never carry you know the rest of it it's always fresh new so we give you lots of chances to buy and then when it's gone it will be gone but it's a lovely way to make sure you've got the full collection and then I'll show you lots of different ways in which you're going to use them. Now, there's something else that's very useful, uh, and that are these buttons. They are these buttons. ATGQ24 is your code for these. You're getting six of the buttons, and you can see it's from each of the boogie colors. So that's $4.99 for your Tilda Lemon Tree buttons. You've got a pack of six in there. And there they are for just $4.99. But it's, it's, if you don't want to do your own covered buttons, this is a great way around because you've, you've got them there. And actually, she uses, Tilda uses a lot of buttons in her toy making to highlight or uh, to add on as sort of faux wheels and things. So it's always nice if you've got it in the coordinating fabric. There we go. OK, now, come with me because this is what you can be creating when you get the book that we're going to show you in just one moment. So within the book, you get the pattern uh, for the cat, the quilt, the lemons, all of it. But a lot of you have said to us, actually, I just I, wa I want to do the cat. Just I want to do that cat. And there's the cat. And so with the cat, we have a cat kit, a kitty cat, a cat kit for you. And so instead of you having to try and work out which proportions of fabric or anything like that, it's all done for you in the kit. Or you might have a friend that's just started out. This is what ignited my love of Tilda, was actually starting to make her toys. And this was a great place to start. Uh, so if you've, if you've never tried Tilda before and you're not quite sure, then this is a really great place to start. You see, look, there's... Um, that's for the, the face. You can see why we got the Osenberg, can't you? Because it's, it's quite similar if you're trying to get the fabric uh, that's closest to it yourself. Um, but otherwise, this kit has it all in, in the right proportions as well for you to make it exactly as we've got on the set there. So you've got that fabric. He is a big old cat. I think he's like 50, not, uh, 61 centimetres. There we go. Uh, so you're getting all of these in the amounts that you need, in the proportions because he's a patchwork cat. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Now, it might be if you've bought the fat eights and you've bought the book, then you, know, you can then go on and, and do whatever designs you like. You get the template and the pattern. You get lots of written instructions, picture instructions within the kit as well. So if I get these out, then I can show you those as well. So it's, whoops, and there's your thread for his nose. And here we go. So. Whichever way you learn. It's like with the Joe Carter toy kits, isn't it? You know, everybody learns differently. So there we, don't worry, by the way, it comes in lots of different languages. I, I did panic the first time that someone from here said, could you just uh, whip us up a quick tilde, da 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 And uh, I was oh my word, got out the instructions, there were so many. No, it's fine, it's because it's in different languages. Um, there are your pattern pieces. Again, if you've got the template plastic and you know that you're likely to make more than one, then you are going to be tracing these off. So you may just as well put it on something that's going to last. And then the beauty of this is that this gives you 
a serving suggestion as to which fabrics to use where. So it does show you very easily, very clearly, how you're going to be making the patch cat. So here he is over here, sitting beautifully by the tree there. And you can see, like if I show you a limb, it's all patchworked, different colours each way around. But there he is, and he's got a little curly tail as well. Whee, there's his little curly tail. Whilst I pop everything back. So um, I think what I really love about these Tilda toy kits, you do have to add your stuffing. That's the only thing it doesn't come with. But everything else comes in the kit. And, um, and I think it's a lovely gift. So you, you might be someone that's made loads of things out of the Tilda books. And actually, you've got someone in your family that's gone, oh, I really like that. And they've got a birthday or something coming up. Then this is a really lovely way to, to give that gift. Or maybe you want to just buy this and make the cat and then just be able to, to then give that, give that patch cat. So that's 26.99. There you go. Now, within the book, and I've, I've always admired Tilda's books for, uh, or for such a long time. And the, the kits for the quilts, uh, I've, they've always kind of bamboozled me because they invariably have a great long shopping list for all the different fabrics that you need. So what we did for you is take the pattern for the lemon tree quilt. And that's your, oh, it's your lemonade quilt, sorry. But it's from the lemon tree fabric. And we've given you all the fabrics that you need. So you're getting two lots of the fat eighths. So do you remember I said to you earlier that gives you all of, all of the range, then you get them. You get them all in here. So you get the full range. So that's 40 fat eighths in there. 40 fat eighths. You're also getting a couple of threads as well. You are also getting a whopping six and a, whoops, six and a half meters of, is that antique white? Just checking. But it's that. And this is all one kit, yeah. Award winning director Mike's like, oh, is this all? Oh, no, it's not. It's Jesse. Sorry, Mike's changed around. Just got a. Jesse. Oh. Director Jesse says he's got no awards. Not yet. It is antique white. There you go. You see, you want, you want that delicate white. Now, this is warm and white, talking of whites. Um, the reason that we put this wadding in here is firstly because otherwise wadding adds an extra cost. So we may just as well put it in there and then you've got it. And the reason that we've gone for the warm and white is that it's lovely, it's cotton, so it's a beautiful natural fiber in there. Um, but the beauty of the warm and white is that it is, it's white rather than an off-white. So all of these delicate colorways is gonna really pop and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So we've put it all in there. So it is a huge, huge quilt bundle. And then you get the full instructions with it and your thread. Now, if I show you the back of the instructions, this is why I've never made one of the quilts out of the book. Because I've never put that shopping list together. But we have. Here we have, we absolutely have for you. We've put in the wadding, we've put in the binding, we've put in everything. Now, uh, we did this on a show with Victoria Peet. And this is just a, a portion of it. So you would have to make six more of these. It's six more of these and then, so, oh, is it six in total? Six in total of these. And then you also have another section like that that goes along the bottom. So that section down there, you'd make another load of those to then go along, along the bottom. So you'd make another one of those. So that's your lemon, you see. That is beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. So that's why it's the lemon tree. And it just means that you get snippets of these fabulous fabrics all the way through. Can I show you? Because what we haven't had in the um, half meters has been the actual lemon tree, what it's named for is this one. But you see, it's, it's one of those quilts that you're just going to see lots of different things in there. So if I show you down here, this is just a little section, a little teaser of the lemon tree, which has got, you know, a chandelier in it and a birdcage 
and lemons and a couple of, couple of chickens and a rooster or a teapot somewhere. There's someone sitting there having a, having a little read. There's all sorts, and, and this is it. So then when you have another snippet of it up here, here you get another little, a little section. So you've got a bear with a crown. Everybody needs a bear with a crown. You've got your penny farthing. You've got a little chair down there. More chickens, chandelier. But you get, little, you get different little bits. Over here, you get a little bit of hummingbird. And then over here, look what we've got over here. We've kind of moved along a little bit. And there's a girl stretching out for a cat there. And this is where the detail is in here. It's, and there's a rabbit just down there. But you get this. So this, is, this isn't just going to be a quilt that just lies around the place and doesn't get looked at. This is going to be the one that catches the inspiration, catches your attention, gets you really looking at the fabrics. From afar, stunning, obviously stunning. You imagine that sort of six times and a bit. Just beautiful. Or even, actually, I mean, you can see, we've just popped it on the table here, but you could just do it as a table runner. You know, it doesn't for your for your picnics. So you do get an awful lot of fabric. But this is all from the collection. But well, you do need to check out because there are only three now of these. So please, but these are the instructions. That's the size of it. It's a finished size. This is a whopper, 52 and a half inches by 72 inches. So you, you the block I've just shown you, it's six more and then another another lemon down the bottom. And that's how it works out, if that makes sense. But the fabrics that you're getting means that you've got the wadding. You've got, you've got all of the collection of the, of the lemon tree collection so that you can really do justice to that. Just beautiful. And your threads, everything. It does just say that you're going to need template plastic or thin card to make the templates. But we've had template plastic on an earlier show, which is just fab. Beautiful, beautiful. And the reason that we did that is because <sighs> I've got the book. Da, 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 da. Oh, I've got an email first. What have we got? Oh, here we go. This is from Rosalind in West Yorkshire. She says, morning all. Number one fan of Tilda. Two foxes for my grandchildren, Jack and Ava. Can't wait for the sunshine range of fabrics. Aren't they gorgeous? You see, then, yeah, then you can have the sunshine cats. And Julie in Lincolnshire says, oh, heaven, I love, 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 love Tilda. Thank you. Ordered more to add to my Tilda drawer, says Julie. You've got a drawer. I've got a great big basket of Tilda fabrics. That's where I'm at. Now, can I show you this? Because this is in the book that I'm about to show you. And uh, they were laughing at me in the office because I absolutely adore this. Absolutely adore it. This is about the size of a bag that I need. And again, this is using all of these beautiful fabrics. So maybe you've gone for the fat eights. And there they are, all looking fab. And look, it's fully lined. And I just love this bag. I love it. We were laughing about it because was it EastEnders when uh, one of the actresses in real life got pregnant and that her bag that she took around just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Like, that's what you need, Tash. Thanks. Uh, now, this is the book. Now, uh, this is the latest of Tilda's books. This is your Sunshine, Sunshine Sewing. I can't say it. Sunshine Sewing Book. There's your cats that we've just shown you. Uh, and there are your lemons that we had hanging from the tree. And in here, you get for under £10. So we had this as a TV exclusive. We bought this back in March as a TV exclusive. We still have that exclusivity for TV. That happens until the end of April. But look, there's that beautiful quilt. And these are the instructions for the lemonade quilt. So it might be that you already have the book, in which case you might be buying fabric so that you can make that quilt if you've already got the book. And again, you get the full instructions and the templates and everything that you need. Look at that. It's a stunner, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it's all done step by step. Now, um, I showed you earlier the other version that we've had of the reverse uh, applique tree. This is the lemon tree version. I think this would be great if you were just using it with your scraps. 
How beautiful is that? But again, you get the template so that you can do a reverse applique cushion. There it is in all its glory. So again, maybe that's what you want to do with your fat eights. And then these ear patch cats. So yes, you might have bought the patch cat so that you get all the fabric and everything with it. But if not, if you've bought some of the fabric and you're just after a patch cat, then you get the full instructions and templates in here as well. Those lemons we had hanging from the tree, I think they'd be lovely if you could fill them with a scent. And then I also love the rag bowls. I think they're beautiful. What a great way to get colour. You see, I'd put some of those in my bathroom, put all my nickety knickknacks in my bathroom in those. It would really give a little bit of colour. But then you get, this is your whale quilt. I think you get three different full quilts in here. Well, I want to do the quilt, yeah. And do you know what? Your Osenberg fabric, wouldn't that look great for the backing? And this is, this is just out of strips. So if you've got something like your stripology or your shape cutter, then you can just be cutting those strips and off you go. But you see, then you can also do either a cushion or elongate it and have it as a draft excluder with just one whale. And they're your whale pillows. They're having a whale of a time. Uh, and then also in here, you've got the octopus. Look how happy that has made that child. That is your patchwork octopus. It's huge, but it's fabulous. And then you get your starfish. So if you just want, you know, just use up your scraps or make a little pin cushion or something like that, you've got that in there as well. So you've got those all in one book. And then you've got your mermaids. You want your Rosenberg for your mermaid faces. That's what would work, an absolute treat. And then you've got the little stars. There it is. And then look, this is the bag. This is the bag that I absolutely, absolutely love. <gasps> look at it. Love that bag. I just, that's, oh uh, yeah. Yoga mat, off you go, beach mat. And then this is the last of the quilts in here. This is, I think it's the regatta quilt. I think that's what it's called. I've gone, yeah, your sailing regatta. Just gorgeous. And then general techniques. You've got your mermaids, everything in there. And then you get all your templates in the back. So again, get your template plastic so that you can take those, take those out and use and make. So TV exclusive until the end of April. There's a little mermaid tail there. There it is. Producer Paul, did you get it? You got it under ten pounds. Oh, oh, as in like I thought you meant you'd bought it for under ten pounds. I was like, well, of course it's nine ninety nine. Uh, no, it was meant to be seventy five p more, and Producer Paul beat down that price to under ten pounds for you. There you go. I just love it for the for the back. Now. Um, Lots of you in the past have loved the whales, and we've had these on the show. I think Joe Carter made the whales with us. There's a big, big whale, little whale down here, little patchwork whale down there. We've had so much fun with Tilda since we started the channel, and they just are. I mean, imagine these. It, this, I think, you know, I look at these. My mum uh, subscribes to lots of different sort of country living type magazines. For me, it's, it's the Tilda magazine, the Tilda book. So for $7.99, Look, look at those. Wouldn't they just look fab in the bathroom? Beautiful. So this is your Seaside Ideas book. And I just, oh, this would make, this would just look so beautiful. I might just redecorate my house. Is there a little tiny whale up there? <laughs> we can get everywhere. There's a jellyfish. Nice. Isn't that fab? So you can have that hanging. Look at the pin cushions. Do you, we always used to collect shells off the beach and we've got, you know, have those in the bathroom, but why not have some? Now, here we go. If you've gone for the Osenberg, and I don't know how much of that we've got left now, then great for the toys. She's got a mini whale, look. I've never noticed that before. And it's just $7.99. Even if you just use it for the inspiration, maybe you just make a toy. Look at that, that whale. It just keeps coming up, doesn't it? And you can make all the toys and everything else. 
really look, oh, look at that. That's pretty. And then you see, I would make that into uh, kind of into pretty bunting. Especially you now after Christmas when you take everything down, it all looks a bit bare. Put it out with something new, something pretty. And then you get your patterns. So if you're, if you're, there's a leg, a ra random leg, uh, sailboat. And um, hang on, where, well, here are your whales in various different sizes. There are your whales. Fab. And so you've got, you've got all of those for $7.99. Love him, just love him. Um, so that's your seaside ideas. Uh, this, the Tilda books were the way that I got started with, T with Tilda, uh, and I just think they're fab. Now this is your spring ideas, because you know spring's going to happen, right? Right, it's going to happen. Yeah, technically it's happening now. Not when I had hail yesterday. Oh, only five of these. So if you want this, you are going to have to be quick. Now, if you've, I don't know if we can get this back, but if you want the Osenberg as well. Oh, look, we did one of those on a show really early on. Pretty clutches. So if you've got any of those bad, if you've got any of the bundles today, why not make yourself a pretty clutch? And this is the thing, is that you've got, you've got, you know, useful items like the clutch thrown in with the toys. That is my dream sewing room. I know, I know. That's the yeah, end. It's, yeah, it's not actually called that, but it kind of is. Uh, it is on my Pinterest, you're quite right. And uh, there's your pin cushion, talking of pins. And then if you want to do journal covers there and there, make a mini sewing machine, it's all in there. Uh, even down, oh, the, oh the, big, the big B. You know. Ba -ba. But only five of these books. So I'm not sure if we're going to reorder these, but I don't know if we can. I just want to show you at the back, um, unlike the other books, you do get a little bit of paper crafting in there as well. So if you are someone that, you know, just likes to dabble in both, then you do get a little bit. You get some tags and things like that. So maybe you're making a, a quilt or something and you want to give it as a gift. Why not give it with a beautiful tag? So you do just get a few of those in the back, you know. That, yeah, Tilda's designs are very romantic. You're quite right, Producer Paul. Yes. Um, okay. Should we go to summer? Why not? I would love a bit of summer. It'd be amazing. I'm going through the seasons. Here we go. So this is your Tilda summer ideas. So maybe you've already made the doll, and then you can just change her clothes. And in here, again, directions as to how to make the... the you know, that everybody knows that Tilda toy, don't they? Once, once they know about Tilda, then it is that classic. There isn't another doll out there quite that shape. And then as you work your way through, bunting, why not? Is that a radish? Sunshine gardening. Is it a radish or a two-tone carrot? I don't care. But you suppose it's a two-tone carrot. Well, if you don't want the carrots, you can always put hearts in between them. And just, it's just some, a bit of fun, isn't it? Oh, I love that bag. <gasps> Ooh. And then you've got your horses. And bolsters and hearts. F fill those with, um, fill those with uh, lavender, maybe. Then you've got all of that. I know it's just six ninety nine. Great price, isn't it? And just giving you ideas as to how to. We've got to go to a wedding in the summer. Well, why not decorate the gift? You know, make it look really beautiful. And then again, all of your templates in there as well. So that's your summer ideas. Then uh, this was where I started with your crafting Tilda's friends. And uh, the first thing that I ever made. Only five of these, but I just want to show you the first thing I ever made is in this book, and it is the snail. That was the first thing that I ever made, firstly for sewing quarter, and my first Tilda make was this, was this, that snail. So 26p a project, but I've only got five, so I'm going to whiz through this so that you can see. But again, you get all the patterns, all the templates, and you've got the... You've got all your dresses, your sun hat patterns. You've got your golden wreath there. So you can really, 
oh, look at them. Oh, I love the fat bumblebees. And then the flowers, we've had those in the background today as well. And you've got your different, your, uh, your dragonfly wreaths there. I love the frog. We never made the frog, and I always wanted to do. There are your snails. You get your templates for the snails. You know what I was saying about the buttons earlier? Grab yourself your buttons, because she also does fun things. She just stuck that on a piece of wood and then popped some buttons on there. But you could have that all coordinating. And again, that's going to look great with your Rosenberg as well, if you've popped that in your basket. We uh, only have a limited number of those, so I've got to stop that there. And then the very last book, let me put the snail back up there, is, I've made so many of those snails. Uh, is uh, Sewing by Heart, again, from Tilda. Well, the woman behind Tilda, of course, is Tuna Fernanga. And this takes you all through the seasons. So you can work your way through. So this is the first quilt that we start off with here. And again, her quilts are just the most beautiful showcase for her fabrics. So this was from the bumblebee range. So if you've got the bumblebee, but it could just be that you've got some other fabrics that you want to put and, and lay out so they can be well seen. So it doesn't have to be from the bumblebee range. We're giving you different options, but you can work your way through the seasons with this book. So all full instructions as to how to make all of these. I love that cushion. Isn't that beautiful? What a great gift. Imagine if somebody gave you that. And uh, you've got all the different cushions. Another quilt. So if you've got any Tilda fabrics in your stash, this is a great way to get them out. Someone will say, actually, do you know what? You could use this with other, des oh, I say, other designers' fabrics as well. If, you just, if you've seen, just look, I mean, look at that quilt. But it's just, you've got, if you've got these beautiful fabrics, get going. Now, this, this was, uh, that was the... Um, the cushion that we've got behind me, just in there, just just over there on the on the shelf, and it, you know, so that's that's your reverse applique, and I think Jess showed us there, and then you've got the elephant. I love the elephants. So again, you know, use your fabrics. Yeah, the elephants are fab, aren't they? And again, more quilts. I whipped up a, sn a squirrel one evening, and actually, the um, it's only patchwork on the front. Then she suggests you, you know, using just a plane on the back. So something like your Rosenberg on the back, and you only have to patchwork the front. Same with the rabbit. I think the rabbit makes a great door stopper, draft excluder, rather. Full details. This is really in depth. So not only does it give you beautiful inspiration, and then you've got your fox in there. And then towards the back, you get your pumpkins. Larry, or gourds, pumpkins or gourds, whatever you want to call them. And then it takes you all the way through into winter and Christmas. And in the back here, you've got your Father Christmas. And you've also got your stocking. It's an amazing book for $16.99. This is absolutely stuffed full of ideas. It's going to take you all the way through the seasons. And then, of course, all of your templates at the back. A really fabulous book for $16.99. Now, um, if you are making any of the Tilda toys, please get yourself this. Okay, this is what I would say you need. And again, this is great for if you're making any of the toys that we've had on the shows. This is your prim turning set. Let me show you how it works. When we first brought this to wear, I couldn't keep it in stock. And I, it's one of these things that I just adore. You get three different sizes, by the way. So even if you're doing your rouleau loops, then you've got a turner that's the correct size for that. So it's just already you're popping these in. Um, I'm going to show you what it is. So. For me, this is about, um, I, did the, I, made, I made a couple of monkeys, and the first monkey, I didn't have a prim turner, and then I did, and it was so much easier. But also, um, bag straps, things like that, so much easier. Basically, you, uh, you have your strip of fabric, and you sew across one end, or you fold one end, so that one end is shut. You can always open it if you need to afterwards. But pop your tube in. So it comes in two parts. You've got a tube and a stick. Pop the appropriately sized tube in there. And then if you've got a really delicate fabric, go in with a flat end. If you've got, you know, just normal cotton, just go in there and then just push. 
and it's turned. That's it. Very, very quick. And then you've got that end in there so that you can then push out those points and you're good to go. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'd still be faffing about and, you know, all fingers and thumbs when I do this at home. But just pop that. And that's, that's um, this is a bag strap made selvage to selvage. So this is 22 inches of fabric going through there. Did anybody, when you were at school, used to play the flute? It always reminds me of like a flute cleaner. No? I always wanted to play the flute. I was really, really bad. Uh, there you go. And there it is turned. Show you one more time. But it's super easy. And you get three different sizes as well. So three different sizes depending on how wide you want it. If you're going with the delicate fabric, you can go in there. And it is, it's sort of tapered so that it does just work an absolute treat. And then you've already got that pokey pokey tool in there to just poke out those corners. Lots of you popping that in your basket. If you are a new buyer today, if you're spending over 10 pounds, so if you want to pop something else in your basket, take it over 10 pounds, then you're going to get a free pair of scissors from us to you. Just a little thank you. Um, and if you are a new buyer, oh look, I've been using the wrong one. Uh, but you do need to check out to secure your order. Okay, so you get three different sizes. Absolutely fab. I adore these and they've just made life so easy. And actually the way that I store them at home, I did just make one of these and just keep them all in there and then I know where they are. There you go. Now, 10 minutes to recap everything. Now the Osnaberg was the first thing that we brought you. Let's check stock because I, I know that one of you bought 10 meters of it poof, straight like that. Now this is a lovely seeded, natural seeded cotton. So do come in and see that nice natural texture in there. 37 of you, it went up to 60 at one point, 37 of you have still got this in your basket, not checked out. So you, please do check out, especially if you're buying multiples. You can really see that texture in there, can't you? This is why everybody's going crazy for it. It's a beautiful fabric to work with. It's £2.50. It, yeah, 10 metre. Yeah, there have been people buying this by the 10 metre. And you'll be getting it in one great long length as well, by the way. So £2.50 per half a metre, you decide how much. So basically, if you did want 10 metres, in the quantity box, you'd put 20. So, oh my word, look at you all multi-buying. Wow. Uh, we've had Christine, Stephanie, Celia, Jennifer, Morag, um, Peter, Anne, Jennifer, Christine. Yeah, Sylvia, well done, Sylvia. You bought a lot. Janet, Julie, Lorraine, another Christine, Alison, Carol, Cheryl, Gwen, Beryl, Carol, Dorothy, Lynn, Jane, Irene, Alan, Barbara, Jean, Jackie, and that's just to name a few. Maxine, Lynn, so many of you, and you have already bought and checked out, so well done. But I do now have 40 of you with this in your basket. 42, 43, 44, 46. Oh my goodness, please check out your baskets. Do not be disappointed. Please check out your baskets. If you've only got a meter each in there, then you're okay at the moment, but, you know, one of you has bought 20, 20 units. That's 10 meters gone. So please do check out your baskets. I don't, we, this sold out last time. So this will sell out at some point today, I'm sure. So just make sure that you've got it. Very, very useful. Whether it's in your bag making, whether it's a bag lining, whether it's in your Tilda toys, whether, like me, I've used this. Um, so just imagine my patchwork, my Tilda patchwork, which I will finish one of these days. I've done a patchwork of Tilda, and then a block of Osenberg. So please do check out your baskets. Six of you just calling at, to make sure that you're not getting it, and that's new callers, that's not, you know, that's not people who've bought with us before. So well done, grab this, grab this. This is uh, your fat eighths. So if you love the lemon tree collection, oh, producer Paul's got a warning. What? I started with six, four have been confirmed, three in the basket. Hang on, my math says that one person there is going to be disappointed. 
Okay, please check out your basket if you have this. This gives you um, 20 fat eighths. That is, that is a fat eighth of each of this collection, each of the patterns in each of the colorways. So please do not check out on that. That is going in my trolley over there. Uh, the most popular colorway I'm going to guess, producer Paul, is going to be this one. Am I right? It's joint leader. We've got a joint leader with, with the green. Oh, that really surprises me. Oh, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. Now, here we go. So, oh, sorry, there you go. This is your hummingbird in dove white. Multi buyers on this. Oh, now, hang on. I, I do need to just uh, just point something out. With the Osenberg, when you buy it, you put in the quantity and that will be cut as one continuous length. These have already been cut. Okay, so if you've put two of these in your basket, you will get two pre-cut half meters. Okay, I don't want you want thinking that you're going to get a, a meter that's uncut. It will be two, because it's a bundle, it's already been bundled ready for you. So that's $18.99, just so that you know. You're still getting the same amount of fabric, but it just, yeah. Um, so that's your hummingbird there. Really, really beautiful. Then you've got your flower field there, and then you've got your latte there. Fab. If you would like it, please check out your basket. Five of you have just popped that in your basket, which means that we're running very, very low on stock of that one now. Now, um, you see, I've got my little bug there. He's at one of the other greens. But he would look equally, equally lovely out of this one. You see, just beautiful. So um, here are your greens. Whoop. Okay. So uh, this is your boogie flower. Hello, it's kind of got like a retro vibe to it, hasn't it? This is your lemonade. Stunning. And then here, you've got your green, obviously. There you go. Uh, that green is uh, grass green. That's our Macau Spectrum Solid grass green for you. Uh, the blue and pink one that we started with, I thought this was going to be one of the most popular ones because normally blue goes like that. But here we go. You've got your boogie flower there. And we've put this with an antique pink. It's lovely, isn't it? Or is it vintage? No, it's vintage, sorry. I can never remember if it's vintage or antique. And whichever one I go for, it's always the opposite. Um, and again, you can see that pink, we've picked it. Because we can do this, because we keep these in our office out the back all the time. So we always have these out the back so that we can, when we get a new fabric in, we can go, okay, what is that color? And we can pick it and that's what we've done. We've gone, right, that is the color that goes with that. And that is, that is the same as the, the pink in the lemon there. And so it all works beautifully. So whether you're lining, whether you're emphasizing, whether you're making these go further by having that in there, it means that it makes your tilde far more affordable. It's $18.99. It makes it go further because you're getting that plane in there, which complements it beautifully and really helps bring out those, those different um, fabrics as well. It's lovely. Lemon tree is next. Oh, the quilt. The quilt kit. Let's have a look. Here we go. Now, with this, you get 40 fat eights. So that's two fat eights of each of the different uh, fabric collections out of the lemon tree range. You also get a whopping great big um, warm and white wadding as well. You're also getting six and a half meters of antique white in there, plus your thread, plus the full pattern, full instructions in there. Now, we started with three. One's been confirmed and one is in the basket. So please do check out on that. Um, this, takes, this takes the guesswork out of, of knowing what fabrics you need. That's what's always sort of, I've looked at the Tilda, because um, it's like a great long shopping list each of the quilts come with. 
And I've always sort of gone, oh, but I don't have, I don't have all those different fabrics in the right proportions. It's done for you then. It's done, and you don't have to worry about getting anything else. You know, you've got your wadding, you've got your thread, you've got your fabrics, you've got your tilde, and you've got your pattern, and you are good to go. Beautiful, really beautiful. Now, let's have a look at some more fabric. I've done green, I've done, oh, hang on, let's finish off this row. I've got this one here. Now, this one is, here we go, let me show you these with these two different. So this is your vintage blue here, and which is picking up this in the leaves. And there's your hummingbird, I exquisite. So the vintage blue does that does that beautifully. But then what about vintage blue and ginger? <gasps> yes, why not? And all of a sudden, that bluey, tealy colour in the, in the lemons, sounds strange, doesn't it, saying that it's lemon and it's blue, but you know what I mean, um, is suddenly what comes to the fore with this. And it's lovely, really lovely. And of course, if you want to mix and match them, then those colours working all gorgeously together. Love it. Love it. Now, after the break, my word, where did that hour go? We have got brand new, we've got this. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Now, this is from uh, Pam and Nikki Lintot. So we've got basically fabric strips ready to go, and you can be making a version of this. This is, the, this is their actual quilt, and we've got two different versions for you to choose from so that you can be making this. And do you know what's even better? Joe Carter says that even as a beginner, you can do this quilt at home. So Joe Carter is back after this very short break. Remember, check out those baskets. Don't miss out on anything. We're running low on a lot of stock. Please do check out your baskets and I will see you in just a moment. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Hi, I'm Tilly Rose and here are my three top tips. The first would be to actually be in the moment. Allow yourself to uh, be surrounded by all those lovely fabrics and cloth and thread and just take time out. Enjoy your stitching, whether that's machine embroidery or free motion or slow stitching. Just allow yourself to connect with the thread and cloth and you'll enjoy the projects much more. So my second tip would be to allow yourself to go wrong. Give yourself permission to make mistakes because we all learn from our mistakes. Um, I've been sewing for a very, very long time and I still make loads and loads of mistakes. Um, but that's okay because you can use those small little pieces in other projects later on down the line, um, but it's good, it's okay. So my third tip would be quite simply break all the rules. Um, if you want to experiment with different threads or different fabric, um, you might have read in a pattern or something that maybe you shouldn't do that, um, I would say, yeah, break the rules. And that's how you learn to allow your creativity to um, come through in your designs. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. On Thursday the 12th of April, we're joined by master quilter Lucy Brennan in the studio. Lucy will be making an all-stars mini quilt which was designed by Nicola Calva and was first seen in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. This brightly coloured mini quilt combines three classic techniques of flying geese, half square triangles and economy units to create a striking finish. Lucy will be showing us how to master this lovely quilt which is available in three colourways of pinks, purples and greens. So tune in to make a mini quilt that will create a big impact. Join us on Thursday the 12th of April at 8am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. 
Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us, even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter, and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. Welcome back. Bit of a treat for you this hour. Now, what I have here is a just one jelly roll pattern. We've seen the quilt behind us. We've seen the adverts for this hour. And here it is. Joe Carter says that even as a beginner, you can make this, which I'm really excited by. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We are very lucky to have that actual very same quilt in the studio. Um, this is by Pam and Nikki Lintot. They are a mother-daughter combo uh, and uh, ever so lovely, ever so lovely. They have award-winning books and this is one of the patterns out of their, uh, out of their best-selling book. I mean, it's sold over 350,000 copies. It's a book or two, isn't it? Wow. Um, in producible says, if I had a pound, but he's doing the maths. Anyway, um, this is out of their Jelly Roll quilt books. And, um, and the beauty of it is it just takes one Jelly Roll. So I want to show you how simple and clear the instructions are. I've got two different kits. Now, I've got some Joel Dewberry and I've got some Amy Butler, but look how simple these instructions are. Really, really beautiful. It looks like a far more complicated, far more complicated quilt than it actually is, which is fab, I'm all for a bit of that. General instructions as well. All instructions as to how to put it together, even how to cut off your dog ears. I mean, the, the detailing here is lovely. Whether you wanted to hand quilt it, it's up to you. Theirs isn't, I don't believe. And then you've also got your binding as well. So all of your instructions, this is, maybe this is, I know a lot of you are saying I'm new to quilting. In fact, there was one of you on our fan page that was saying that um, I think it was your daughter or your daughter-in-law was, was pregnant and, uh, and had asked you to, to make her a quilt. She didn't know where to start. Well, this might be. This might be a beautiful one. Um, so Jo Carter says this is easy. She's going to show us just how easy in just one moment. But if you are maybe making, you know, and you're not quite sure what colour to go for, then what about these beautiful spring and summery colours? They're fresh. They're modern. This is Joel Dubry. We did get this back in stock because it had been so popular. I love this. I've got lots of bags and things that I've made out of this. I've... Oh, Really love it. Uh, so Joel Dubry, he, um, he was a graphic designer actually first. Very well revered by his peers, actually. They, they, he does gorgeous, gorgeous florals. And then you get lots of geometrics through there as well. But the colours all hang together beautifully. So it is gorgeous. And, and we're going to see this in more detail because Joe Carter's going to um, make it out of this one today. And you are getting in here. Let me show. Hang on. How many? Is, yeah, you're getting. Ba, 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 ba. It doesn't say. Well, we'll find out. Anyway, two and a half inch strips. Now, you're also getting. It is 40 pieces, isn't it? Which is perfect. That's why it, it all works. 
So you get exactly how much you need. Look at these lovely threads. Aren't they great? And then, of course, your instructions. And then half a meter of each of these fabrics. Magenta and baby blue, but that is like a linen look, baby blue. It's beautiful, really beautiful. And, and we see these both of these colors throughout that jelly roll range, which is just gorgeous. And that's $63.99. So that will do your sashing and your binding. So that's why we've popped that in. So this is what you can be achieving. So that's, that's Joe. That's, that's part way through Joe's make. And that is with the Joel Dewberry fabric. Looking fab there. It's amazing, isn't it? Different fabrics give it such a different look. Love it. Now, maybe you want um, more uh, jewel-like colors, in which case we've got this Amy Butler one here. And if I just show you here, now we've, we've limited on stock of this. It's just down to how many of these we have left. But look at the greens and the purples in here. That's your base note running through here, which is just beautiful. Amy Butler, of course, renowned for a lot of her botanical type prints. But what you're also getting here are some geometrics as well. So you've got that contrast that you can really uh, mix and match because that's what this quilt is asking for. And again, 40 pieces in here as well, 42 and a half inch strips. So you're also getting half a meter for your sashing and your binding plus your two threads as well. So you've got your forest fruits and then you've got your lilac in your spot on there, half a meter of each of those, plus your 40 pre-cut strips. So, you know, if cutting isn't your thing, don't worry, because it's all done for you, which is absolutely fab. Okay, nine of those, and six of you have already just popped that in your basket. Please check out your baskets. Let's go and see Jo. Let's see what she's got. What have you got to say for yourself, Jo? Hello. Hello, hello. Now, easy. Yeah, that's what you said. Easy. It's really, really straightforward. I mean, the instructions are brilliant, but... Aren't they? So yes. clear. Well, not only does it give you how to make this quilt, but it has lots of info about, make, you know, general instructions about making um, quilts. So you have seam allowance tests and pressing and pinning and all sorts of bits of info in there. So it's just things you're going to use time and again when you're quilting, isn't it? Yes. I mean, it tells you how to calculate backing fabric, things like that. It's brilliant. Um, how to attach binding, everything you need in there. Now, um, we calculated how much backing fabric that you would need, and we'll go into that later. It's three metres of backing fabric if you're working with a normal quilting weight, uh, quilting width, which is your yes. 44 inches. Um, if you're using a 60 inch, then, then it's less. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, we've got some options, so we've got everything covered. Yes. All bases covered. Where do we start? We start by opening the jelly roll and dividing the strips. That's that my favourite bit. It is, but then it's also, it will the never go back. It yes, will never go back. Once you've done it. Um, dividing the strips into sets of three and how they've phrased it in here, because it does even select, um, hang on, I'm reading the wrong bit. Sorting your strips, divide the jelly roll strips into 13 sets of three strips. And they did it, whereas they would choose two, they'd have a stronger one or a paler one in the centre of the so three So a contrasting strip. one through the middle. Yes. And that okay. way you just got the definition and you just got different effects with each. Well, you yeah, know, we can see that, can't we? Because then you've got, you've got here, you've got, so you've got two different types of blue and then you've got your lighter colour. So that's, that's what should, so, you know, whichever of the jelly rolls that you're going for, yeah, that's that's the way to do it, and you can get the general effect here. This is the actual. Oh, this is there. We go. We can see this, where, how Joe's gone with this. So that's Joe's Joe's take on this, and that's with the atrium range here, which is sixty three ninety nine. Yeah, that's on my floor. I'm that's laying it. Well, what's hang on? What's sold out? The Amy Butler's sold out already. Good job with sticking with the uh, John Jubilee for now. Well done if you managed to get that. Gosh, you were quick off the mark. Oh, wow. I didn't need to do as much, because the quilt was made and I just had to do my prep things, but once I got going, I've done more than <laughs> I really needed to. <laughs> did you know? Mm. Mm. These are the only, the only strips I have left. Really? I thought, yeah. you, you really did. You really did. It's, it's a really nice thing to make. It goes together really quickly. Um, I love it when using a jelly roll so that the hard bit, I know some people like the choosing the fabrics 
fit the most, but I find it quite stressful <laughs> selecting fabric. It can Whereas be quite intimidating. It can. Isn't it? But I did, as I said, and I grouped them into threes and had two similar-ish ones, mm. either similar colours or similar pattern or value of colour. So mm -hmm. they stood out. So this one, I put these three together with this stronger print in the centre. And centre. they do say, if you're not sure, squint a bit. Squint. That, uh, because I then you'll see... Um, because then, you you know, if you do squint, then you can see the same colour value and a contrast through. Through. And I have the stronger one, two of them on the outside and a paler one in the middle. I have a few variations like that and then you'll get more depth within oh, nice. the quilt. Beautiful. So this is the other. So are you supposed to do 13 of these? So these are the only two that I haven't done. So uh, you did enjoy doing this. I did really enjoy, and I absolutely didn't have the time to do it either, but I still <laughs> did it. <laughs> but that's just how it happened. Yeah. So the first thing to do is sew the three together. Yes. Now the strips are not always exactly the same length. Right. So hold them for make sure, but pin them because we're sewing together in long strips. It's not cut on the bias, but you will still, as you sew just naturally stretch one a little bit more than the other. So it's a good idea to pin the strips before it's you sew them together. It's unusual for you to pin. It is unusual for me to pin. So I'll but line these have. up. But I'll do it really quickly. But yes, pin them together and then sew along the length. Now, what revolutionised my uh, strip sewing life yeah. was actually using a quarter of an inch foot, which had the guide on. Yes, that really helped. Ah, oh, I've wibbled and wobbled around all over the place when when I've sewn strips together and then taken and then you know that one slipped over the top because I didn't pin, and uh, and then you know had to go back in and unpick and sew, uh, uh, pin it, get a quarter of an inch foot on your machine. Mine has a guide. I've got two. One has a guide. One doesn't. If I'm cut, if I'm sewing strips, I'll always use the one with the guide, and then I can just butt it up against it. And it's just it's meant it's taken that error out. Yes. It's brilliant. It does, it really help. But don't panic if when you pin these together, one is slightly longer than the other. Yes, because sometimes that does happen. So I'll pin these and then just sew quickly together. Um, this, I measure the strips, I think, because of the edges are pinked, I don't think the two and a half inches goes from the peak of each no it's just inside it goes it goes to the bottom of the of the, the trough if you will of the of the pinking bit so bear that in mind as you're sewing okay. them so you can see the little bits of yes yes pinked edge. You. oh we've had an email from sally in sunny margate oh look she's made one hi <gasps> ladies this is my version of this quilt made for my nephew as a wedding present wow it's beautiful Oh, isn't that gorgeous? And how different this looks, actually, with all the different colours. Yes, and your eye picks out different things. So my eye goes to that small, um, the central hexagon in one of them. And I love... I'm loving the mustards and things in there. Yeah, oh, it does. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I, I love it. I mean, out of the um, 350,000 copies of the book that has this quilt in it, uh, there are going to be, you know, a few of you that have maybe given it a go. There are. Right, so beautiful. All set up. I'll do this really quickly. No, that's okay. So you would you would just repeat. I find this bit quite methodical and calming. Maybe that was why I did <laughs> eleven sets of them. Was this during the Easter holidays with the boys at home? Just after we got back from being on holiday. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just going to my my sewing room not to be disturbed for a while. I set the washing machine going and then <laughs> retreated to the sewing room. <laughs> Did you have a nice holiday though? It was lovely, really good. Good, 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 good. Now, whilst you sew that straight line, because that's, that's it. what is gonna happen, isn't yeah. it? So straight line, quarter of an inch. Let's talk backing, because I, I did sort of tease you a little bit with that. Now, if you're going with a normal width fabric, a normal quilting width fabric, which is 44 inches, which is what our, our fabrics are in the main, then you will need three meters, that's six units. Okay, so I've got some options for you. 
Now we've chosen these to go uh, to go with the various different options. This one works beautifully with the Amy Butler that's now sold out. Uh, so this is your linen look and sort of, yeah, in your coral. Now it might just take us a little while to get, but um, if you've gone for the Amy, Amy Butler, I wonder where that's gone actually, whether I could hold that. Oh, floor manager Wayne's just walked in. Um, but I see, I just wanted to show the colours of the Amy Butler with this. Have you got that Amy Butler fabric roll that you've just taken away and put nicely somewhere? Uh, so again, six metres, uh, six units, three metres. Now, um, we'll go through, well, that's your coral one. Okay. Uh, and you've got a nice texture in this one. Ah, oh, the graphics don't want to play. So you've got a lovely... Um, linen look texture in this but without it actually being linen which is nice so that's 100 percent cotton now joe has finished so let's let's have a look we'll come back to the rest of those in a minute so I'll, once you i'm going to move these strips so in all 13 three strip sections together so we need 13 of these mm -hmm. press the seams in the same direction i pressed this side already i'll press this one up as well and pressing them in the same direction means that when we chop the triangles out later, so some will be upside down, some of them right side up, when we flip them to sew yeah. them together, the seams will go in opposite directions, so they'll nest. And actually, it they... Such a change, such a it difference, It makes a huge it? difference. Yeah. I, I mean, it says to pin in the instructions, but I didn't pin at all sewing mine together not? at that point, and they all landed spot on. <laughs> that there note of surprise. There you go. Should we dance? Thank you. Now, uh, whilst you do that, if I just rearrange my desk and excuse me, oh, there's a there's a pin in there. Gosh, uh, needle rather. Here we go. I do know the difference between needles and pins. Isn't it? It's kind of like your your basic 101, isn't it? So we had slight hiccups with the graphics there, but we've done the coral. Let's have a look at this pink. Now this works with your Joel Dewberry. So uh, if I just grab, sorry, Joe, I'm just going to borrow one of these. I'll put it back where I found it. You see, with your Joel Duber, if you want that for your backing, look how beautifully that goes. And that's, uh, that's your uh, Macawa Solid producer pool that you've got there. And this is 325 per half a metre. You will need six units. Okay, so that's your magenta. Uh, now... If you want your spot on in your blue, and actually you do have some blues through this. Here we go. There's your spot on blue. And that's at 4 dollars for your baby blue. And there's kind of like a bluey grey colour in the Joel Dewberry, which really works, but also really lovely. Oh, here we go. You see, it just gives you... So just imagine, so you can see how that would, it would all, it's all, it's all sort of going to work. Uh, and then, sorry Joe, I'll be with you in just a moment. Okay. This is again, this one we've picked to go with the Amy Butler, but actually goes very, sorry Joe, I'm sorry, messing with all your, all your strips there. Look at that actually, that works really nicely with the Joel Dewey. Doesn't it give a different feel, a different look? And then if you wanted your, your spot on baby pink. Then you've got that one. And that's at 4 dollars per half a metre. You are going to need six units because this is 44 inches. And then look, I love it with a raspberry. Look at that. Yeah, so this is your choice. And this is, and this is, you know, this is really your choice. Who you're giving it to, what their favourite colour it is, what room it's going in, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right, okay, so we have sewn, we have pressed. What do we do next? Cut. Ooh, good. Because so far we've not cut anything, have we? It's just been sewing. Straight in there with your sewing. I don't know what, definitely not Easter chocolate that is. 
on the, <laughs> the through life in you thing <laughs> that you took home to use. <laughs> Definitely Can't not possibly that. imagine how, definitely not. <laughs> no, definitely no, no, no. not, no. Certainly no, no, not no. had a small chocolate rabbit next to the sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from Creative Grids and this is their ruler. And um, Pam and Nikki Lintot, who are the authors of this, authors of this quilt, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. They work a lot with Creative Grids. Why have we used it here? To get, we need a 60 degree triangle. Okay. Yes, so this is the 60 degree equilateral triangle ruler. And so I've used this to cut all of the triangles, okay. the internal parts of the quilt. And it's, using this just means they're all exactly the same and they will all fit together. And it's brilliant because you can line up, we want the six and a half, it's taken the dog, dog ear off. So we line up the six and a half inch line and sometimes it's helpful if you pop a little bit of tape on there just to remind you the line okay you're working to but also we've got the internal lines so we know these strips line up as well perfect so i can see there mm -hmm. that it's running parallel and then sorry can i yeah 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 just, just move back a little bit just while i take this end off so i take that side off you need to get you a stool or something when you... Because these desks are high, aren't they? Yes, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, just move along the strip, cutting out the triangles, lining it up each time. And if once you line it up, this edge is off slightly. Just make sure it li everything else lines up with the ruler. And you can always trim both edges again. This what one. is most important to line up then? Those Those strips to make sure that they are on on the line well we want a six and a half inch we want this to line up this way so we mm -hmm. want it to be parallel along the bottom but also just check sometimes it's just a case of just if it's not quite pressed perfectly flat but as well we want these finishing in the same at the same point on either side because that way they'll fit that's how you get that to do, do that yes that way as well so that's why it's important to line those up and use your ruler for it. That's what that ruler is so good at and that's why it's there to do that with. Okay, so I'll cut a few out and we'll get four triangles, four of those, I think. Let's move that scrap bit. And five of these, I think is how it works out. So are there repeats of the set? Yes, there are, aren't there? There are repeats of the same pattern. Because there are six in each hexagon, but then we use, we also fill in these Little sections. Bits. Right. Gorgeous. Now, this is on Joe's living room floor. Not a sight of any rabbits around there. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously been eaten. Um, and and this, is, this is Joe. She didn't need to make that much. She just got a bit carried away. See, the two missing are, are this one and the other one that I haven't done. I see. But I've laid them all out. And I like to lay them out, sort of mess around with the, the positioning until I'm happy with it. But actually, I laid it out and I keep a copy of it so that as I'm sewing them together, I've got something to refer to. So you know you, know you like what you're doing. That yellow really stands out, doesn't it? This one? Yeah. It does, and I like the, in, the sort of smaller, no, hot pink ones as well. No, it's fab. Really pretty. But I did get a little bit carried away with it. What was it about this design role that really took your fancy then? I love the colours. I think at this time of year as well, I want this sort of fresh sort of colour palette. I'm a bit fed up of snow now, to be oh, honest. Oh, yeah, um, both. And rain and just dreariness. Make, make your home your little fortress of sunshininess. Yes. If it can't be spring outside, then it can be in my sewing Absolutely. Room. Daffodils the lot. Yes. I oh, love daffodils. My son keeps picking them. He had his first solo play date the other day. Oh, did he? Growing up a bit quick. And, uh, and he did, he picked her daffodils. Oh. Yeah. And, and they just, you know. And her mum sent me a photo of him presenting this daffodil. So it was just the one. <laughs> you know, and your heart just melts a little bit. And you think, yeah. Oh. Right, so I think I've cut enough out here to make a hexagon. Is there much fabric left over with this or not really? Not really, it's quite 
economical, you have a piece about this sort of size left over at the end, which you could yeah. keep. And I mean, I have all bits like that in my scrap box that can become pin cushions or. Do you notice how different this looks now that it's cut out and put together slightly differently? You just, there you go, look, fab. And this print works really nicely, I think. Brilliant, it's isn't it? Hex Absolutely shape. brilliant. This is what Joel Dubry does so well, is these geometric prints. Yes. But then you'll also get that the, those beautiful florals. The contrast with the florals, I think, is... It, oh, it's just lovely. And so you, you will have that and those colours pulling through because that colour, when you put that in there, you've got these pinks here, which are, which are through there. And then you've also got um, the yellows pulled through and also that... This is the joy, isn't it, of, of a, a design role, is that you do have the full design. It sounds really silly, but you do have the full design to then pull through, and you get that colour coordination working, and it just all marries together a treat. Yeah, we've got the hexagon shape, but then there are circles within it as well, and I really like these. With the little, your little mini hexes that yes. are in there. And the way they sort of look scattered throughout in this one. Oh, no, it's fab. But it is a beautiful design role. Right. Beautiful. Got now, just to let you all know, we've only got one kit left. Oh, we haven't just got one of it. Oh. That, uh, yeah. <sighs> I was going to say. <gasps> As in, we've got one kit choice option for you because the other one has sold out. So this is your Joel Dewberry. So don't let it just stay in your basket. Everything is uh, selling out quite quickly today. So please do make sure that you check that out. It, it's just beautiful. It's really beautiful. I Everything you need apart from the backing, but then that's your choice. I really like the idea of this over the sofa now that... Oh, yeah. I think it can. Do you have quite um, a neutral coloured sofa? We have a dark grey one. Oh, that's so perfect. Grey goes with everything. Yes. Well, I have children, so I've now discovered that charcoal grey is the only The only colour. The only colour. Furnishings. But then I throw in something that can go in the washing machine. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yes. And, and give and give some some different colours coming through. Yes, bring it all to life a bit. Lovely. Yeah, we have a leather sofa. Wipe clean. Perfect. <laughs> Again, <laughs> with children and dogs. Right, what's next? Okay, so once I've done most of these, I laid them all out and worked on the layout for them. Okay. So that was the one I opted for. I'll move this. I haven't got room to lay them all out now, but hopefully... I've piled them up in order so that I'll be able to carry on oh. following that pattern. You mean the ones I rummaged through? No, no, they're all right. They're different. Right, which way up does this oh. go? So I've stitched. Oh, wow. Okay, so you don't, you don't put all the hexagon together at once? No, we do them half at a time. Oh. Look. So we're up to this point. Sew Fabulous. them together in strips. So I'll sew one of these strips together. That goes up there, doesn't it? Fab. So, so look at this. Oh, so this is just stunning. So you will end up with all these strips that you're just chain piece. Yes. Gorgeous. And they're really easy to go together. Right, I need to find. Whoa, oh yeah. This. Mm. Okay, well, beast. <laughs> this could take a while. Right, I think it's that and that. <laughs> ah. It's very difficult to work out quite how something's going to work to bring them... No, right, no, it's the wrong... That's, that's, that's the one over there, the ones that I, I took earlier. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Joe. It's fine. In I'll... being really helpful and showing everybody all the colours that it went with, with the oh. backing fabric, I rummaged. I've worked out what it is. One of them, as we see here, one of them is made up, is a scrappy hexy. So all of these follow the pattern apart from one. And of course, I would have the one that doesn't follow the pattern here, just to confuse me as I'm trying to lay this out. It could be me, though, too. So. <laughs> That, so that's your scrappy one down. I've not noticed that. Yes, there's Where one. Where is it? Oh, I can't find it now. But there is one scrappy one made up from leftover. So nothing bits. is wasted. That's the beauty of this. So it just takes um, a design roll, jelly roll, and then a half a metre of um, two different fabrics, one for your sashing and one for your binding, and then you choose the backing. So what you're getting in the kit... Is everything to do the front? Yes. Including your thread and your instructions. 
it's all in there. You just need to check out those baskets. $63.99. Love, love, love this. <laughs> <laughs> right, they're so the going there. And then that one. They're the other two bits for this strip, and I'll move all these. See, I really did enjoy. You did, didn't you? This. Well, if nothing else. It comes yeah. highly recommended for who? Yeah, she's got some amazing bunting. <laughs> yeah, well, quite. Uh, okay, so super achievable no matter what level you are at. Because even now you think, oh, it's sewing triangles together. Because the seam, oh, of course, this is the scrappy one, so it doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean. <laughs> Should we look at this one? Let's look at this I'll one here. This one, which yeah. will definitely follow the pattern. <laughs> you might need to flip some seams around on this one. Okay. Yes, because they all go in the same direction. <laughs> I might just swap them over. So let's sew these together. Uh, I, mean, I guess this is another option, isn't it? You could do them all scrappy. You could. I quite like them all scrappy. So when we bring these edges together, because the seams, are like, uh, is, they're going in opposite directions, they nest really nicely. But the proof is it actually, shall I see if what I'm saying is true? I'll sew these together without pinning them. Okay. She's brave, she doesn't care. Live on TV, what could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> Maybe I should nothing, have you nothing, nothing at all. And would you press? Are you going to sew and press straight away? Actually, I, I stitched them all together, but you should press after each one. But obviously, I didn't want the iron on and a chocolate bunny. You know. <laughs> well, no, I like that you're practical about this. Health and safety for the bunny was foremost. Yeah. Um, but when we come to sew strips together, press one strip seams downwards and the one next to it seams upwards so that they'll nest as we join them in strips as well. Do you know, I think I would be be like you. I think I'd do the whole strip then press. If you do that, the sewing some triangles together will mean that join start from the bottom and go up with one side and then top to bottom on the other because as you sew, you'll sew some seams over any naturally as you sew. Right. Okay. So good. Oh, it's going to look so good. But see, look, the seams. Oh, it works perfectly. Do just because they nest together. Yeah. It's really easy to get them to line up. So, this is another reason why this is a great starter project. And I love how we've got this hit of aqua through there. But you've got your purples, you chose your purples and your pinks so that they're similar but not the same. Yes. Just enough of a difference that you get that interest, but you've got this, which is working beautifully all the way around. Gorgeous. Because this one I thought was quite icy. Yeah. And then other ones with stronger pops of colour in them. But then you've got that aqua, haven't you, in there. So, voila. So can you see why I got uh, carried away? Yes. Now? Yes. And also because this is one of my favourite design strips to work with. It is really beautiful. Really beautiful. And uh, I, I just, I enjoy it hugely i did my first ever quilted bag with this oh, did you yeah yeah uh come on let's come and have a look at it you know whilst i chat um so joe is going to just carry on sewing those together and this is the design roll design roll jelly roll same tomato 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 Basically, it's two and a half inch strips pre-cut for you. So the accuracy is there. If you're at all wobbly with your cutting, don't worry, because the accuracy is here. You're getting, it's almost two of each one, I think, if memory serves me correctly with this. Fabulous. So there are the colours. Beautiful. Um, now, we spoke about the binding and the sashing, and we've put half a metre of each of these in so that you can really see. I love this linen look in the blue there. It's gorgeous. And can you see how it's just picking up? It's like a lighter version of that in there. It's sort of a baby blue, but it, it actually it works with those aquas in there and the gray as well, because you can see there's the gray. It's a lovely midway in those. Um, producer Paul saying it's great. Uh, <laughs> see what goes on in my ear? That's what happens. Uh, and then this is your magenta here. And that's working through with those pinks. So you could have that as your binding or that as your sashing. It's entirely up to you. Matching threads, instructions, hurrah. Hello. 
Hello. I, one of the, the scrappy one, I sent the seams the, in the opposite direction. Oh, did you? Oh, very sensible. So. It's amazing, actually, isn't it? You know, we've just finished sewing the purples together. But then you look at the next one. Yes, it's got, look, it's even got that same strip in there. But what a difference in feel because you've got... Mm -hmm. It's lovely, isn't it's it? I see. It's fabulous. That's going to look lovely on your grey sofa. Yes. Oh, no, obviously not that I would take it home and finish it and put it on my grey sofa. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. No, of no, course, no. that wasn't the plan at all. Look at this, though. Look at this coming together. Oh, nice. Very so, nice. I'll join these two strips that I've already done together now. Yeah. So I'll move these out of the way. If um, you needed a lesson in sewing a straight line, this is it, isn't it? You're going to be an, a pro by the time you finish this. Yes, and I would pin these together to keep these would you? points lining up. Yes. Okay, half the oh. stock of the Joel Ruby has gone. Well done. So please check out because the other one, gone. Did I say before as well, once you line, you put the hexagons out, then fill in around the size. It shows there's a plan to follow in the pattern. Um, just to square it up more, you add, add in leftover triangles. It's, the, the pattern is just so easy to follow. It is, it's really good. And, and as, as well, if you've got the Creative Grids ruler, that just is the icing on the cake, isn't it? We'll have a look at that in just a minute, but that is what is making this a joy. I would go as far to say, an absolute joy to play with. Step by step, easily put together. And I like how they've used those contrasting colours too, so that you can really see. And then your general instructions, even down to how to cut off your dog ears. It's good, isn't it? It is, it's a really great starter project. And I it think. even shows you how to mighty, I mean, we're not gonna get to this bit at all today, no, yeah. but, at some point, Have Quilt will require to mitre those bound edges. Even shows you how to do that. Love it. Love it. Clever ladies. Very clever ladies. So many of you um, new buyers today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, remember, it is 1 p.m. so you can check out. So, you know, as we start to run low on stock of things, don't miss out. Just check out. Check out your basket. If you are watching this on repeat, by the way, this is the other thing, is that, yes, Sometimes things bounce back, people change their mind or whatever. Uh, it, it is always worth giving our customer services a call if there's something that you absolutely love. And this is where a, a few people on the fan page have said this before, that they thought it had run out, they've, they've chanced it, they've given us a call, and actually one has bounced back. So uh, for whatever reason, 0800 112 4433. We do not charge you for that phone call, and it's a UK-based call centre, and they're really sweet and lovely. So, uh, and they're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not the same person, obviously, because that'd be cruel. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What you do? Oh, you're pinning! I'm Joe, pinning, what's I'm going pinning. on? You've pinned twice today. I know, I know. It's, uh... You're going crazy. Okay, so <coughs> I'm going to st stitch these together now. I've lined up. I've pinned at the points where the points will join. Let's see if I can open this up. So in the centre, the pins okay. are pulling it together, but that centre point of the hexagon. But the key yeah. with this, um, press really well and it, cutting out, take care with cutting them into triangles because the more accurately they're cut, the easier it all is right. to sew them together. And it's quite fast. Okay. This is fab, isn't it? But if I'd had, had a day or two more, I <laughs> would nearly have finished this. <laughs> Then you might have calmed down after your holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Found it very uh, meditative. Now, um, a tool for the job. Yeah, no, I should. I, I did promise, didn't I, that I would talk. About... See, this having this non-slip grip is all very well. <laughs> <laughs> but when you try to pick it up off the desk, it's gripping it. Now, almost half the stock of this is gone. Um, it's the right tool for the job, isn't it? It's what they recommend. And so we've, we've got it for you. Uh, this is a 12 and a half inch triangle, 60 degrees. Gives you a little, a little idea there as to other ways in which you can use it. I mean, that's, that's one way. That's, we're doing a version of that, basically, aren't we? We're doing a more complicated version of that, more intricate version. But then what about doing a, just a, an edging? 
just like that. It, it's, it's great. And because you've got, you could do um, a whopper. I mean, if you've got, um, if you've got fabrics that you absolutely love and it's a big print, I'm thinking of some of our tulip pinks and things yes. like that, then this is a great way to really bring to life some of those. If you're, if you're going to cut the full 12 and a half inches, you could fit a tulip pink owl in there. You could. That Couldn't you? Great. Or the squirrels or something. But again, for this project where you've got your jelly rolls, perfect. So very versatile piece of kit, this. For $22.99, don't forget, it's got that inbuilt non-slip grip, so you're not having to add any grippers or anything on. This is not going anywhere. Love it. Love it. You're having a nice time there, just gently sewing. Nice. Ah. It's so relaxing. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, I'm just trying to think. Freddie's school is 60 this year. Oh, is it? Mm. They're going to celebrate this all year. Yes. Yeah. Freddie got confused and told me that his teacher was actually 60 this year. Oh. She was thrilled because yeah. she's actually old than that. So, uh, oh, right. She was like, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but I'm thinking this would be a lovely quilt to make for them. It would. And I could applique a 60 in the middle of one. Yes, that's not great. Oh, Maybe that's what I need to do. What I need is some time off work. <laughs> <laughs> Should we look at your living room again, Joe? Let's take a look. It's very tidy. Did you hoover first? I didn't. I just covered over the mess with the... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, with hexagons. that's what we like. Well, you've got a lot of hexes to, to cover them with. Ex ex excellent. I do like. I do like. 63.99, and you've got everything for the front of this quilt. Um, Award-winning, these two, Pam and Nikki Lintop who did this, and they've sold over 350,000 copies of the book that this pattern is taken from. You know they're doing something right, yeah. don't you, when, when that is the case. And we do have a bit of a love affair for a, for a design strip, pre-cut, job done, happy days. It, yeah, make, it does make life so much easier. Because not everybody's got a stripology ruler. They were egg and I love. Hang on, you're thinking again. I, yes, I knew I had it upside down. <laughs> there we go, look. So it does, it goes together really, really quickly. This is where having this um, photographed actually is a, is, a, is a great idea, isn't it? Because you, is. you've always got that there as a reference. I love this one. I, yes, I could quite happily just carry on now and make the whole thing. And I might do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, where's Joe? <laughs> I normally have to do voiceovers after we come off air, just so you know. So if you just don't actually use the machine whilst I do this, just I stay in here quiet. and just keep, keep saying it'll be fine. That'd be okay, won't it? <laughs> look at this. Now, you see, here's the other thing. Wouldn't that look stunning? If you did two strips, if you did like another, you know, you did the Ooh. next one down, table runner. It would, it'd look really... Bed runner! <gasps> That'd be really nice because you get the full hex even yes. and then half ones yes. as well. Oh, yes. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, because you could sash it, couldn't you? You could. So that you don't lose. Yeah. Ooh. Versatile. Yes, so tempted as I am to carry on with this and just make the whole thing <laughs> as if nothing else is happening. You do have 12 minutes. 12 minutes? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, what are we doing next then? I don't think I'll get, I could quite get it finished in 12 minutes. I have. I've cut out the binding strips. This, I mean, carry on like this until it's finished. Finished, And then it needs to be squared up and add the border strips around the outside. Hang on, hang on. Talk me through squaring this up. Well, give it, once it's all done, give it a really good press so it's really nice and flat. And then we need to trim to make it into a square shape. Right. Any tips for that? Because I find that a bit tricky sometimes. Big ruler. Okay. The big um, 24 and a half inch. Yes. And I mean, it's the first ruler to get really, but it's, I mean, I used it to cut these out. It will be a, it's about six inches by 24, isn't it? That sort of size. We've got two. We've got one which is six and a half inches and one which is eight and a half inches, but they're both 24 and a half inches long. So whichever one you go for, the, you're right, it should be one of the first rulers. It's always one of the first rules that we recommend when people go, I've decided to quilt, it's your fault, where do I start? Yes. We take full responsibility and that's what we suggest. It's because you can cut with the fabric 
with that size ruler and I kept that folded over and I cut these strips and these yes. border strips will be joined as one continual length and then trimmed down to the size right need. do you do that on a on a 45 degree angle or do you just sew the edges together with these i would just sew them together okay actually does it i'm fairly sure it's, it doesn't say to my to to sew on the angle no i can't see it on the angle anywhere it's, it's nice isn't it having the actual it's the, beautiful the original yeah. no i think so <laughs> no we can't so um and can i just can I just run this along here? Because this is the baby view. I love the, the choice of fabric here. I do. I opted. Isn't that a gorgeous colour? So have you opted for the magenta for the binding? Yes, I thought that like a really pink frame would really pop next to... So it's going to be, just to give you an idea, it's going to look... It's going to look like that, isn't it? So you're going to have your sashing, your sashing around the edge there, and then it, it's like having a dark frame, isn't it? It is, and I think it really lifts. It really yeah. brings the. Well, look, it picks out that, doesn't it? Nice. Helen says, "Hi, ladies. Lovely pattern. Any tips for keeping the hexi centres flat?" Says Helen in Derbyshire. The hexi centres, because you've got lots of seams converging on the one point, that's where it really helps to have the seams going in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. So we can see these ones go that way yeah. and those ones go that way. And it's folding them round. These I'd be inclined to either press open or press one in either direction if the rest of the seam would allow it. Mm -hmm. Just to keep, because you do get that bunch of yeah. fabric there. But because we've had, because we have the shaping at the top of this, the doggy, at least it has taken some of taken the fabric out. It's already taken some out, out, isn't it? Yeah. So, right, again, right tools for the job, Helen, isn't it? Fab. Okay. So, sashing. Sashing. Right. So, we have adding a border, border here, and it says to rotate your quilt and add the border strips, join them together in one continuous length, and then determine from your quilt the size um, you want and cut your borders to measure from that. I'm trying to see what it says about I would square up the quilt before before this point, but I'm, I don't see the bit that it says about that yet. Well, that's because you're looking for it and it's always really hard when you try and f go back and find it. Yes, I can't see the bit that says, but I would square this up with my long ruler. Mm -hmm. So we have, we'll have bits here where it's slightly longer and just I'd trim it to square it up so that we have yes. nice straight edges to work and to okay. join the border from. So your borders don't go wibbly wobbly. And it does come together remarkably quickly, actually, doesn't it? It does. Beautiful. And then once the borders are on, quilt it nice. as desired. Because this isn't the edge, is it, that you quilt? That you, you, have a, you have another one because you've got the, the wibbly wobbly. Look, this is what I mean. You've got these bits that need to come in. It's upside down, but it's all right. It works either way up, doesn't it? Yeah. It's fab. Okay. And will that still be that quarter of an inch seam allowance? Yes. Quarter of okay. an inch seam allowance throughout. And if you've not quilted before, it is, it is good to practice on some scrap fabric and measure your seam allowance to make sure you are definitely taking that quarter inch because it, it just makes life easier. If you've got a consistent quarter inch seam allowance, it makes it easier overall then when you make a quilt, it just means things will line up more conveniently. It'll make it easier to go together. I just want to show you, can you... Different colours just give such a different effect, don't they? <gasps> Doesn't the raspberry magenta colour really come out? It's a modern twist, isn't it? It's a modern take. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. I love the way the circles one works. Yeah. Oh, no, that looks really stunning. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's going to, um, that's going to look beautiful in so many different environments, isn't it? 
Because that could be, I mean, I'm thinking about the, the woman that wrote on the fan page that she, wa she wanted to make a baby quilt. Beautiful. It was. Um, I have now found the bit in the instructions. They don't <laughs> trim. They use they this don't. to make the, I, I would trim. Okay. I have to say. Um, but they say to pin this on and sew this on. Okay. Um, pin and sew to quilt, pin and sew the border to the quilt to form the straight edge. Press and then trim the excess so hang on, fabric. That, that is one of your straight edges. That's I got myself confused earlier. I was like, hang on, where, where are we adding these in? It's along this line, isn't it, here? We'd have... That you have to add in the extra bits. So you would pin these on and sew along this edge to give oh, you a straight... And do you then cut that... And then trim away the excess. Oh, I see. See, I wouldn't do it that way personally, but... Pam and Nikki. Pam and Nikki. 350,000 I mean, copies go sold. Go with Pam and Nikki, don't go with me. <laughs> <laughs> Options. Yeah. There are no quilting police. Whatever is going to work for you. Oh, I see what you mean now about... Yeah, no. I was I was busy looking, thinking that you had to... Right, so then you cut it. <gasps> but you've sewn it and then you've got to cut it. Maybe in. that's because, because once it's cut, it's cut. Whereas if you leave it and sew the border on first and you decide then you're happy with that, then it's not quite such a... Okay. Wrench, wrench. is it to cut... <laughs> We both did for exactly the same word. Yeah. The wrench. <laughs> okay. So, yes, follow the instructions. Don't follow. What Excellent. I would do. But We've got five minutes. What would you like to do in five minutes with this? I'd quite like to carry on sewing. But Go on, then. <laughs> Go on, then. Go on, then. If you're happy to, then we, because then we'll start to see it come together even more, which is beautiful. Of course, it is now round the wrong way. Is it round the wrong way? Okay. But with quilting it, you could add... Oh, that one must go that way then. If uh... Yeah. You could focus on doing it hexagon at a time or a general all-over pattern. Or There's so many options for this. I think I... I mean, you could even hand quilt certain areas, which they I think do, would be beautiful. They do talk about hand quilting in, in the instructions. In the instructions leaflet, there's a, there's a piece on hand quilting. Um, the other thing is, if, if, you know, if this is maybe your first quilt and they don't necessarily all meet beautifully, then you could always pop a little button or something on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, ten of you need to check out, says producer Paul. He says you're all sitting there with it in your basket and he doesn't want any of you to miss out. That's, that's the thing. You know, some of, some of you missed out earlier when we had things sell out super, super quick in the Tilda hour, so please don't miss out. Um, it's only yours once you check out your basket. That's just how it is. It's life. It is. But, um, yes, don't... Uh, I, it, it, see, I would... See, I want to do this again now. I'm, do you? Okay, this is you, now my new... Yeah. Is this your new favourite? Because it's so quick, and yes, it is. I'm already planning what I do next with it. Mm. So, with your next one... <laughs> I love that we're already planning the next one. With your next one, is it going to be in these colourways and then different things like a bed runner or...? Well, I don't think you can have too many quilts, personally. So I would like it in a variety True. of different, you know, sort of autumn shades, summer shades. Nice. Yeah. Producer Paul says, you know, quilters that just do it for the love. Because we were talking about this the other day, about how many of you at home are almost as prolific as some of our designers who have to make quilts all time for the shows. And actually, there are so many of you that that make almost as much. And people are so fast as well. I like, know. So remember, or I've seen something on a show, a quilt, and then it's appearing in the group already. Yeah, really fast. Yeah. I'll take my hat off to you. Absolutely take my hat off to you. Yeah, I can't go into the... Facebook page too often, the fan page, because otherwise I lose I lose hours, hours at and time. then I'm behind on my sewing. But I yeah. love looking through at what people are making. It is, it's very inspirational and, uh, and nice and supportive too. So this coming, oh, this is the scrappy one here. I, mm, I quite like, I like the scrappy one. Am I allowed I to do. say that? It stops it from being too uniform. It just gives it that added bit of quirkiness. It brings something completely different to it, doesn't it? It does. You see, I would be tempted, Joe, to do some matching cushions. But that shape, yes, that would look really nice. So some hexagonal, and then because you could, you could, yeah, you could, couldn't you? Let's just 
Should I put it there? Is that the one it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think hexagonal cushions would look fab. It'd be nice. Mm. And especially for those of you that say that you've got too much toy stuffing because we send you so much stuffing every time. That's the answer. with this. Stuff it with this. Absolutely fine. Uh, Joe, I'm going to leave you sewing. Okay. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Just love it. Mm. Should I, I want to stay and play. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> you can you can carry on if you want. Oh. I'm gonna take oh no, the I'm gonna take these instructions though, because you know what you're doing. I do. And know. I'm gonna take the ruler. <laughs> so you can't make another one. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to finish that one. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Now, before I start, yes, produce Paul. Ah, oh, now, uh it's not in my trolley. It's oh it's oh, hang on, I left it over here. Wait with me, bear with me, bear with me. Now, producer Paul said, can I just mention the warm and white batting? Yes, yes. Now, the warm and white batting, this is one of my favorite waddings because it's, uh, it's cotton. I think it's something like 97% cotton or something, you know, it's a real high portion of cotton. And then there's just a little bit of polyester just to hang it all together because obviously it is a natural fiber. So it's predominantly cotton, um, made in America from the cotton, cotton fields of America. Uh, you see, there you go, there's a cotton plant there. And um, this is your warm and white. The beauty of this is that it's white rather than a cream. So your normal, um, uh, batting like this would be sort of a, a natural wadding, would be a would be a creamy colour, but this white means that the colours are true when you quilt over the top of it, which is fabulous. Now, um, we've got Joel Dewberry's collection left. So this is so that you can make the Pam and Nikki Lintot in the gorgeous colourways that Joe has been showing us. And look at Beautiful, you've got mustards, you've got aquas, you've got gray purples, you've got magentas, you've got all sorts going on in there. A, be a beautiful colorways. Uh, you've got some florals in there, you've got geometrics in there, you've got all sorts going on. It's truly stunning. And then, um, as Joe's just started to show us, you've got the choice of whether or not you go for the baby blue as your sashing, or you want to put that for your binding. Now, Joe decided to do your, um, uh, your sashing in the baby blue, and then she decided to do the wadding in that. And then, of course, you get your threads as well. Now, coming up tomorrow, that's your kitten full. Joe Carter is back again. Now, she's going to be on at 9, but at 8 a.m., 15 pounds an under hour. Oh, happy days. Uh, your caravan wall hanging with Joe Carter at 9 a.m. 10 a.m., your traditional quilting fabric, so we like a bit of that. And then 11 a.m. is a lilac ballerina, again, one of Joe Carter's really rather fabulous makes. Uh, that is with John Scott. I'm off for a week because it's, you know, Easter holidays and small people and all that. Um, so I will see you in a week's time, but please do remember to check out your baskets. Any questions, give us a call. It's free to do so, 0800 112 4433. And also give us a call if you're just checking stock as well. We've had lots of sellouts, lots of near sellouts. Just if you're after something, do make sure that you've just checked that we've got it in stock. It leaves me to say, check out your baskets, have a lovely rest of the day, and I'll see you in a week's time. Bye bye. Join us on Friday, the 6th of April, when we're joined by toy maker Joe Carter. Joe is on the show to make her ballerina softy, who is back by popular demand with a brand new lilac look. You won't want to miss Joe's expert tutorial on how to make your very own softy ballerina with an adorable top knot, a delicate tutu of lilac and embroidered facial features. Joe will be giving us all the tips and tricks you need to bring this character to life and will be sharing her knowledge of getting the finishing touches just right on your favorite softy toys. So join us as we dance away with Joe's new lilac ballerina. Tune in on Friday the 6th of April at 11 a.m. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.